Hey, pod lovers, it's that time of the week again where life gets rosy, your colours are vibrant, and you drown out the sound of your partner with the dulcet tones of Ed001, Ed025, Ken, and yours truly, Ed666. So this week, we have a humdinger of a podcast for you because both Manchester United and Everton lost, which warms the cockles of my heart. So without further ado, let's go on with the fun and games. Guys, I've missed you. Not been around since the Villa game. (laughs) I wonder why. How's it all going? <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. Leaving me to suffer it all. Yeah, no, I'm good. Good morning. Good times. Good times. Let's, good times. <laughs> well, let's not um, hark uh, about history. Let's crack on with it. Uh, let's yeah. do the uh, we- weekend premiership games in chronolo- chronological order, lads. All right, let's start with the uh, Wolves versus Palace. Wolves 2, Palace 0. Good performance. Anybody want to go? Start. Uh, well deserved uh, win by Wolves, I thought. Thought they were better than Palace. And uh, just a basic, straightforward win for me. Palace never offered anything much. And I thought they were very disappointing. Was this the game? No. Got, you know, we're getting confused. Games gets mixed up. Yeah, but wasn't this the first time they'd scored in the first half for ages? I <laughs> think it might have been just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> being honest with you, okay. Wolves are um, Wolves have turned it up a gear since the first couple of games of the season. They seem to have clicked into gear a little bit. Um, Palace, like they're dour side, really, aren't they? So you don't know what you're going you're going to get from them. Some sometimes they're they're, they're they look half decent, and other times they they were poor, uh, uh, look very poor. And I just thought they were they looked poor and were poor uh, on the night. I'd agree with that, Ken. I'm just surprised that that um, Roy Hodgson's alive. I mean, let alone being a Premiership manager. How old is the guy now? Seventy-two, I think. But when you look Jeez. at him, he looks like one of those dozzery old men that's in their nineties and can't get out of their chair. You know, them ones, don't he? He's a, a, a little bit like Joe Biden. No, he's. Um, <laughs> he's uh... God, he better win. All right, Trump, anyway. thank God. No, I'm Trump, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, he's... Um, listen, Roy Hodge is a good football manager. I know he didn't do a good job at Liverpool, but at, at, at low-level yeah, clubs, yeah, at, at, at mid-level level. clubs, he's he does a good job. I mean, how long has he had Palace now? They've never really <laughs> been in a, a dogfight for relegation come the last two or three games, to the best of my knowledge. He's, he's, he does a steady, Eddie job. And if I'm the new... If I'm the Crystal Palace chairman, I'm thinking... Yeah, I'd keep him, you know. I keep him. He's he's a steady Eddie, and that's all Crystal Palace need just to stay in the Premiership. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, um, that's all they're aiming at anyway, isn't it, each season, so mm. and, and and he know he's good know how. He, like I mean he's I know he didn't do a good job at Liverpool. But he's, I don't he's... count that as as count <laughs> at the time he, he you know, he, he would have had no chance anyway because it was when Liverpool were were in on the verge of going under, remember, and then they the takeover battle was no. going on and that. Yeah, well, in fairness, he was probably the right man in the right place at the right time for Liverpool. Do you know what I mean? Because he would, he was putting up with all the crap that was probably going on behind the scenes and and keeping the show on the road. Really, that's think, that's all I he think was doing. Liverpool fans would very much disagree with you what? there, Ken. Let, let yeah, me give you a think that, yeah. let me give you a team that he put out ten years ago. I think it was Rainer in goal, left back Konchelski, centre back Kiriagos, Carragher, and Johnson at right back, Spearing, Polson, Havanovic. Morelis, Shelby, and Ngog up front. So, uh, well, ten years ago that was. That was, uh, yeah. But listen, I, I think you're right. I think did he? Did the Hodgson came in. Was it after the takeover? He was no, their before. man. Was it? He, before, he didn't. Right? Just by the way, he didn't buy all those players. Not his fault. He had to play them. A lot of them he brought in. <laughs> Paulson, for instance, he chose. The yeah. thing that got me is he just didn't uh, understand Liverpool. That was the thing. He just didn't get the thing of the club. He he thought about media, you know, the same. A draw is a good result. The same as he does at Palace and everywhere else. And that's always been yeah, his problem. When he steps that. up a level, he just doesn't understand that mentality that a win's the only thing that matters. Anything else is not a good result. And that's his problem. 
Yeah. I, oh, Jesus Christ. That's a, an epiphany. What? That is exactly <laughs> what Solskjaer is like. you know what troubles me the thing that really troubles me is he fucking played at Man United so he should know what it's about we're yeah, gonna yeah. have to wait at least half an hour, mate. I can't. We can't do this just yet. I'll start <laughs> yeah. off with it. Hold your horses, mate. We got plenty of time. Please, to please. You're gonna have enough time to bitch and moan. I promise you. But we sorry, can't sorry, start my, with it. Sorry, we're gonna sorry, close it out on that, so you can just go yeah. as long as you want, then. My wife mate, just put me back in the cage. It's okay. Stop. Carry on. <laughs> you're gonna have your moment. I promise you. I promise you. All right. So. Um, I just does anybody know how these two Spa- uh, uh, Portuguese lads and these Portuguese lads are getting on at uh, Wolves? You know the one they paid uh, the one that kid they played. The, he's only a yeah, he's, um, he's a teenager. He's only a sub at times. That's it. He's yeah, just, they, just uh, getting fed in. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> what do you think? Like, it's too early to judge him. It yeah. seems to me that I know that, nothing about them to be honest. That's gotcha. Silver's. Uh, when I've seen of him, he looks a bit special, to be honest. Better than that Joe Felix. When he, whenever what, the one at Atletico Madrid, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, they yeah, paid yeah. 108 million for him. Yeah, I yeah think he, re- he's not setting the world on fire, is he? Nah. No. And I think that's why they, they were allowed, they uh, uh, Nino Spiritos uh, allowed Yota to leave because this kid was going to be something special. And they needed the right sided cover as well at the time. <laughs> Gotcha. Good point. All right, guys. So that's uh, game one done. Uh, next game is uh, Sheffield United versus Manchester City. Um, still crazy. I cannot believe that stat that, that uh, uh, Sheffield United has still only got one point. Yeah, but not being funny. At the start, they had a chance to get something, and like you know, it's it's not just them. That they, you know, they just. I'm not one bit surprised. Against Man City, I know you just tipped them, Ken, to go down, didn't you? But yeah. you know what? They're improving, you know. Yeah, Sheffield United are improving. They had some good chances and some good uh, instances against Man City. And it, I know City won and they deserve to win. But they didn't play that bad, Sheffield United. They just haven't got a goal scorer. Yeah, maybe uh, yeah, they've got... Brewster might be in the future, but he's not ready yet. He's not ready yet, no. no. Listen, yeah, it's that, great being a kid scorers, coming in with great players around you. Now he's the great player. He's probably the best player there. So who's going to create yeah. from? Who's going to create from? I just don't yeah, see that's... it. It was an awful decision by Brewster. Probably, seriously, that is what's wrong with young professional footballers today. Some of them either ignore good advice or don't get any advice. A blind man could see that that was completely the wrong team, the wrong manager, the wrong club at the wrong time for a good player. But I think he didn't have a lot of options, to be fair. It was them or stay. Well, then stay. Don't well, get pushed out of a club. Don't get pushed out of a club into a shit situation. It wasn't I think it was a game time. He wanted to go. He was the one that if had they, to leave. If, if they go down, his game time be worthless to him. Well, you say that, but like you know, he, it did him a favour in the uh, playing for Swansea in the Championship last season. Alone is fine, absolutely. You're not beholden to them. He's after signing a four-year contract uh, or five-year contract. A bid, you you said yeah, but take I, the money. Yeah, take the money. I it's more I, than about money. I see what you mean, but you've got to remember, it's not like he's gone to a club. That if they go down, they're going to turn down any big offer from anybody else. If he's proved himself and he's done well, anyone comes in with big money, they'll sell straight away. And if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't, then it wouldn't have mattered where he'd gone. If he's not uh, oh, ball, no, yes, it would, because he's he, he's not doing well, because he's in the wrong team, he's playing the wrong side of football. Twice. But he's, play, he, he's in the wrong team, playing the wrong side of football for his attributes. A blind man can see it. I don't think it'll matter where he goes. I don't think there is a. I don't think he's ready, to be honest, for the Premier League. Well, then he should have stayed put and gone on loan. Well, yeah, maybe. He should have told the Liverpool people who wanted the money 
Two bad fellas. Uh, hang I on, ain't hang gone. on, hang on. No, he was the one that pushed to get out. You're getting it the wrong way round. Liverpool wanted to keep him. Klopp wanted to keep him for yeah. sure, but I just don't think he's good enough. That was what Jota came in for. That was why they moved for Jota came about because he had, he wanted to go, rather than. Well, he you should know, have, he should have stayed put. Whoever's whoever's advising the kid. I think it's worked out well myself, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, you would do. Yeah, I'm not a big. Yeah, I've got to be honest. I'm not that convinced Brewster's going to be an, that good anyway. I think he's massively overrated because he's English and young. Oh, well, I, be honest, good, I can't say I've be. seen him that many times, but I don't think he's Liverpool quality. Not the team. Yeah, I don't now, think he's you know good enough. I, mean? I don't necessarily think he's Liverpool quality either. Be either. But that that doesn't that doesn't but mean you wanted him to stay at Liverpool. <laughs> Huh? You wanted him to stay at Liverpool. It's not That's Liverpool why. quality, but you wanted no, him to stay at Liverpool. No, no, Abid, you're wrong. He had a contract at Liverpool. He hadn't got a good option. So he should have stayed at Liverpool until he got a good option. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that, I, I just, I feel that he probably thought that he's never going to get a chance, like, within the squad that we have now. So I thought he probably went to progress his career. And fair play to him. Because no. I personally don't feel he's good enough. I don't think he's going to break into that Liverpool team. He's not going to... I think that even if Salah, Firmino or um, uh, uh, Mane left, he still wouldn't get into one of those positions. I just don't think he's talented enough to get a, a first-team place at Liverpool. So I think I'm he's not disputing the wood for the trees. I'm not disputing that. But that doesn't mean you walk out into a poor, poor club in a poor situation... With, with, yeah, with some, with some, that doesn't Ken, suit you. Ken, with respect to, with respect to uh, Sheffield United, they've got Jack O'Connell out, they've got Liz Mousse out, they've got John Fleck out, so there's a lot of players that would be able to aid and assist and him to poor, becoming a player. They're, ex they're actually extremely wealthy. They're owned by a Saudi prince now, remember? I didn't say they were poor. You did? I poor as poor. in poor, poor, <laughs> not as in. I know, I'm joking, mate. I was doing. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yeah. No, no, I just say that. So the thing is, he might poor, see so. potential because they've got money to spend. For the long term. If he's saying that for four years, he's only nine. He's what? Nineteen? Is he now? Twenty? Nineteen or twenty? Something like that. Four years at 19 or 20 is still plenty of time to go on and move on afterwards and have a decent career anywhere. Well, Going back to Man City, yeah. did you think they, they were below par the weekend? Yeah. The season. They're not firing on all cylinders, and I know they've got problems with the attacking side because they had Jesus out and they had uh, Aguero out. But they're not firing on all cylinders, and I, I can't see the logic. They've got great players. Sorry, I was just going to say, do you not think they've done the same mistake as they made last season, but instead of defending central backs this time, it's strikers. They just haven't got enough of them. No, they haven't, no. Uh, they haven't got enough strikers. And I'm struggling after De Bruyne to find a decent midfielder at the club. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Bernardo Silva, to be fair. But yeah. is he a midfielder? He's really a wide player. He's really yeah. a wide player. And Gundogan's not getting his game, is he? He's, I don't rate him at all anyway. I've, no. I know Abid loves he's, him. He's a uh, workman like pro. Like he's a he's a good pro, but he's not top no. end, is he? No, he's not top end for me. He's he's I just think really? City squad I think Manchester City squad is probably the weakest in the top six teams or the top six clubs. Not the top six teams, obviously, but the top six clubs. I think they've got the weakest. They've gone backwards, haven't they, under Pep? That's It's as simple as that in terms of their squad. And I think you've gone again. So I'm going to pause it. Oh. I think they've got one of the weakest squads in the top six. Um, in terms of depth, but first eleven is is pretty serious stuff. But after that, it's it's really really poor. I think Cabellos gets into the Man City team and Party gets into the City team. In my opinion, not even the squad, the team. So if those two can get into the Man City team, 
and they're playing for Arsenal. There's something bloody wrong. <laughs> party, but I'm not sure about Sabalas. I think he's died. just not a good player at all. Him. Not a I, I think I think he's tidy, and I think he's a real Pep Guardiola type player. He's a he's a given goal type player. I think he'd do very well at City actually. Not a big fan. He's t- he doesn't do. He's too lightweight, and he wouldn't uh, press the way Pep wants, and he doesn't foul the way Pep wants. So I'm not I don't think he. How's Diaz getting on the uh, the defender, the new guy, Ruben? He's been in and out, hasn't he? he? He's not had a chance. Pep yeah. just rotates yeah. all the time. This is the problem. And I do think he's taken them backwards. I think Tra- 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 doesn't work the business, does he? Uh, Fantalis, he, he's, uh, he's, he's a bit lightweight. He? Yeah, I know, he's a bit lightweight, though, for to play for Man City at the moment. Mm. And Billy, they're playing him, but the uh, guys, they're playing him up front and he's a right winger, isn't he? Yeah, His but... finishing's awful. Yeah, yeah, it is but awful. They had no sense for forward. They had no sense for forward. I mean, someone he, has to he, play there. Pep doesn't even want Jesus. He wants to he wants to swap him. For who? He wants to sign somebody else to replace him. He wants. He decided he's got the answer. So, you know, they're in a real mess. Why didn't they just buy a striker? Why didn't they do that in the summer? Exactly. This is what I don't understand. They needed one I, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it was extraordinary. Uh, I, uh, it was extraordinary, actually, the, the, the lack of um, investment in the summer in forwards. and. Uh, but didn't they want that the guy from Inter, uh, Inter Milan, Martin? Is it, um, uh, what's the Argentinian? Martinez. Martinez. Yeah. Oh, Leandro Martinez. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, everybody wanted him, really, didn't they? I think that Manchester City were quite serious about him and Barcelona yeah. couldn't afford him. But maybe they I don't know, maybe it was a lack of funds or uh, financial fair play and uh, obviously the coronavirus having an impact. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, spent 65 on uh, Diaz. I was going to say, no they, one was and they spent big money really. on Ake as well, you know, when they didn't actually seem to have a plan to use him. No, no, you're right, Trish. And, and, and signed Diaz a couple of weeks later. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah you just, got, it's just, Pep's making a mess of it, as usual. He's just spending money like he, it's going out of fashion again on things that he doesn't actually need to buy. It really yeah, is going out of fashion. My wife on handbags and shoes. <laughs> <laughs> she needs them. Isn't that you, To put up with you, she needs them. <laughs> Tell you, she didn't know before on the days you met me. But go on. <laughs> is this uh, is this Pep's last season? You think at City? Um, I, I don't think he thinks so, but I think it is. I, I think it depends on how they do. To be honest, I think I, it depends yeah. on how they do. If they win, if they do well, if they win, I think there's a chance he'd stay. Uh, it does listen, come down to him. Does at the end of the day, because the owners are desperate for him to stay. Yeah, well, it's his choice. I mean, yeah. his choice. It, it is one hundred percent down to Pep. Yeah, he won't be fired. He won't be pushed. And look, it, it, it just—I can see if it doesn't go so well for him, I can see him just jacking it in, taking a year off, and then popping up somewhere oh, again. Perfect. You know, that's what you, do, you know. He yeah. he said no to Barcelona uh, uh, job. This uh, uh, publicly said he's not. He doesn't want it this week, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, he hasn't. Had, that's not actually what he said. He said it, it's not the time, is what he said, or something to return yet, or something like that. If you actually read the full the full quote, like he didn't actually rule out returning in the future. He just said it's not the right. You know, it's not not my time to go back now. It's not my time now, or something like that. So is Xavi definitely going to be next season a uh, uh, a Barcelona manager? Because they Kuman got a two year contract. Because obviously that's just a uh, really transitional who wins situation. Really, wins the presidential election. Gotcha. And who's the guy that wants Xavi to come back? All is he favourite for the? All of them bar that font that wants Pep. Okay, and who's the favourite? So it doesn't matter because all of them want uh, uh, Xavi. So Xavi. Wants Pep back. But he wants and Pep, got... Xavi, Iniesta. He wants to bring them all back to have roses with the club. A... So, and his front uh, is he is he favourite or is he second favourite or um, is he going to win? I don't actually know. It's impossible to tell. You can't. Nobody can really get out and speak to anyone at the moment, can they? So it's kind of a bit. Gotcha. It's really difficult gotcha. to find out information, like you know. 
Gotcha. All right, guys, uh, let's move on to uh, Burnley 0, Chelsea 3. Uh, Chelsea are, are just bubbling away nicely. They have a setback or two, and then they come back and win a few yeah, games. You've got to ask what, what happened with the Burnley. The, why didn't they get a penalty right at the start? The yeah, but that's a whole, yeah, but that's a whole yeah, but can I'm of worms. The game it? changes completely if they get that penalty. That's a completely different game, and that was a absolute stick on penalty, that one. Yeah, but mate, then you're talking People about VAR standardisation of refereeing. Yeah, much. but I mean, yeah, I understand I where you're coming from, mate. VAR. But that... oh, you could see it when it was there. You were like, "Oh my god, that's got to be a penalty. That's a bad challenge." And luckily, Barnes was jumping up to avoid the tackle. Otherwise, he'd have ended up with a ACL injury as well. Like, yeah, well, the Van Dyke can't look after himself. It's his own fault. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying is, they said, you know, this is two of them in a row, two weeks in a row. You're getting where, uh, like, blatant fouls, terrible fouls by goalkeepers, and not getting punished. And we're just going to, you're just going to end up with more and more players getting injured. And these are bad injuries as well. These are ACL causing injuries. The, the challenges that are being made. So yeah, I, it, it's got to be somebody. Surely somebody's got to say this has got to be stopped. Well. I I pointed out I had a, I had a really good debate with someone over the 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 Pickford injury uh, to Van Dijk, and my point was Pickford was his challenge was awful, right? There's no getting away from that, right? But for years and in every game of football, and you will see it probably in every game of football, where if anyone is one on one with the keeper. And they get their shot away and the keeper comes out and does one of these star jumps trying to stop it and all that sort of stuff, right? Nine times out of ten, the forward has to evade that tackle by the keeper. Mm. Nine times out of ten, or 99 times out of 100, they will get out of the way, right? If they don't get out of the way, 10 out of every 100 challenges are as bad as Pickford. Simple as that. Yes, the, the caveat to that, Ken, is that Pickford's challenge wasn't a star uh, challenge. It was, it was, he was standing up and he went straight into his leg. So, and that, I, 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 I don't know. It wasn't a star yeah. challenge. It was a jump in, no, scissored, I said it at the start. I'm not comparing to Pickford's because Pickford's okay. challenge was desperate. Yeah, but yeah. In every but the main one was the same as well. That's what I'm saying. In something's got to be, you know, they've got to start. Yeah. The, the rules are there in place to already deal with it. But Keeper's challenge with their feet, three yeah. foot off the air, studs yeah. going into players every single game. Yeah, and they and need, have that's done, what I'm saying. And have, but they have done since football started. Yeah, the foot up. Keepers they used are to not jump challenging. The foot up, the didn't they, in the knee up. No, keepers are not challenging for the ball. Mm. That's the difference. They are trying to stop the ball. They're not it's, challenging to win a tackle. But get short to spread themselves as mo- and make themselves as big as possible. And that's, a, that's coaching. That's coaching yeah. for all, all keepers, is make yourself as big as possible. And you're trying to add yourself as much as possible to less of the target. Absolutely. They're yeah, not wait, challenging but... for the ball. They're just trying to build no, them. They're not challenging for the ball. When you're spreading yourself and a forward goes into a keeper that's spread eagle, spread eagled, that's completely different from what Pickford did to um, yeah, and uh, Mendy as well, and, uh, and Mendy did to Barnes. I don't know whether it is. You know, I don't know whether they both jumped he was just out. They didn't spread themselves. They jumped into a challenge. There's a different. Yeah, yeah. If he just spread himself, that would have been fine. Well, keepers do that. Issue. They do it all the time. They've done it since football began. That's not... And they will do it next not... week, and they'll do it next month, and they'll do it next year. That's, that's, the legal, the that's legal, though. That keepers spread themselves. It's not legal. It's, it's, not legal. it's not legal to jump at a player with your studs in the air. Simple. It's not legal yeah, in any shape or form. That's what we're but it's accepted because it's the art of goalkeeping. They're not challenging for the ball. They're just trying to get in the way of it. And yeah, I agree with that. But they're not. Yeah, but going... let's go with it. 
Ickford went to injure Van Dijk. He I'm went. To, I mean, sure. he went leg into no, leg. No, no. Sure he went to injure him. I disagree on that. Get off. I, I think he knew he could possibly no. injure him, but I don't think that was what he was aiming to do. He was I don't think he's got a thought in his head no, to, to do anything. I really don't. I don't think he's got the... Not even a minute, not for a minute second. I, I don't buy that. That's absolute nonsense. Okay. okay, all right. Maybe I misspoke. Let me let me retract that and let me say that that if Pickford went, he had he could have gone spread-eagled and made himself big and go in for a challenge with Van Dijk. He didn't do that. That would have been fine. Nobody would have complained because it was the nature of the way he went in. That's where the complaints and the uh, uh, toxicity. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that, that wasn't the point I was trying to make. Anyway, the point I was trying to make was that, like, you know, it's harsh on Burnley because they're not getting... This is constantly happening to them. Is that... Yeah, yeah. Get penalties. That. that was my yeah, point rather that. than... I didn't want to get into the old pick with thing, but I was just saying, you know, we, <laughs> they've got... They should have that in mind was what I was trying to say. You know, the referee should have spotted it because it's only recently happened... And it should be fresh in yeah. their mind. They should have spotted that. God, he's just jumped in, and we saw the hysteria. You know, the hysteria when it and it caused an ACL. So it could have done the same here. You know, this is so it's obviously reckless and endangering a player's health. But what are VAR Not doing, Chris? Do what are VAR doing hey, when you get to like that? Like Not getting pulled up. Yeah, and it's Burnley as well. Every time they don't get them, and I know they can be overly physical at times because they're trying to make up a gap in quality that they they simply don't have the quality. But you know, it it just yeah. feels like they're being hard done by every single week, and I feel I'm beginning to feel sorry for them. Yeah, no, I think Burnley do get the the. the I think Burnley do get the 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 wrong end of the stick a lot of the time. To be honest. Mm. Uh, it just... I, okay. I, I, sorry, sorry. I, I just no, think... No, mate, go for it. Uh, I just think... I don't know what it is about Burnley. They just don't seem to get decisions. When VAR look at these things, I, I just don't know what's going through their head half the time. Um, maybe they thought, well, look, that was the same as Pickford's. We let it go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, I don't know what's going through their heads. It's, no, it's uh, insane. I mean, did Liber should Liverpool have got a penalty that day? Yeah. Should Burnley have got a penalty that day? Yeah. But you know, if a if a player is one on one with a with a with a goalkeeper, right? He 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 slides it past the keeper to to have a go. The keeper on it upends him. He doesn't get a penalty no. because he's had a shot. What yeah. a load of nonsense! I know, that, they call that the, the advantage rule. How is that an advantage? If, if it happens scored. in the centre circle, it's a late tackle. Yeah. yeah. Going back to that, can I just say that one of the biggest things with refereeing now is that the linesmen don't put the flag up oh, when it's offside. Yeah. And if a forward's going through and a, a keeper does one of them star jumps or whatever you want to call them, a player's going to get injured and yeah, badly yeah. injured because the linesman will put his flag up. He could smack into the post, he could trip over his own feet, anything, because they're not putting the flag up. I mean, what's wrong with sticking your flag up if you think it's offside? I don't, I don't see know. The issue. Well, I don't see the issue at all because you play to the whistle. If the linesman sticks up his flag, yeah. all that's yeah. doing to me is indicating to the referee yeah. that he thinks he's offside. But the referee doesn't have to blow. Exactly. And if he wants to check on the VAR, then that's fine. You're spot on, Ken. You're spot on. Uh, and, and Billy, you're spot on there as well, because I, I was having a conversation with, you know, Benny Bowler, and, I, and he was telling me, he, he's a referee, he does, he's, he's refereeing. And he, said, he made that exact point that uh, somebody's going to get really badly hurt someday. Yeah. And for no reason. For no reason at all. And it'll be it. It'll be when it's offside anyway. It'll oh be yeah. Massively offside. Someone will get badly hurt, and people will be up in arms about it when they could have stopped it months ago. Yeah, yeah it's. But I don't see the problem. You see, if a player stops because the linesman puts his flag up, and the whistle hasn't gone, I take him into the dressing room and I bait 
seven shades of shite out of him. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. That's one yeah, thing but... I do like it about it is that players are now playing to the whistle. You notice there's a lot less of the stopping with their arms up now. They actually play on. At least yeah, hi, great yeah, so I think that the linesmen should be encouraged to put the flag up. The players should be encouraged to ignore the linesman yeah. until the referee blows his whistle. Yeah, just sensible football. That's what it's all about. Sensible, yeah. sensible yeah. referee yeah. and being a linesman. Guys, Jeez. we've only done two matches. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. Uh, Sorry. Right, hurry up. Uh, Next one. Guys, are Burnley overachieved? Are they running out of steam now and this is it for Deutsch? Or is it just a... Uh, a I feel bit... really sorry for Sean Deutsch. I yeah. think he's doing everything he can and nothing's going for the man whatsoever. It and it's help. going to costing him his job, I'm afraid. Well, it doesn't help that the chairman shafted him and wouldn't let, you know, didn't let players go that he wanted to keep and wouldn't give them new contracts, even though they weren't asking for huge money yeah. and stuff like that. You know, he, he's been shafted by the so chairman. Tricky. And that's where the problem lies with them. Yeah. Listen, there's two of them down there on one point now, isn't there? Sheffield United yeah. and Burnley. In trouble, I'd, move I'd, 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 put a, I'd put a good whack on Burnley finishing above Sheffield United before the end of the season. Um, I would I'll agree let, with that. Yeah, I think Burnley, with their experience, with their knowledge, with the manager's knowledge, the players' knowledge and know-how, they have a chance of getting out of it because there's a couple of, there's a couple of spanners down there in Fulham and West Brom. Oh, you know, I'll tell you what, Ken, I'll take that bet if you if you if you're uh, willing to oh God, a wager. Oh I'll yeah, yeah, I I I'll take that bet. I think I think Burnley will finish ahead of Sheffield United. Yeah, let's do that we'll after the uh, forfeit. After One the of you, whoever loses has to do a forfeit. I reckon. Yeah, whoever loses has to do the next podcast in the nude. How about that? <laughs> no, no, because we might see it. Because you'll put if it's, it's Abbey, he'll put the bloody cam on just so he can spoil it for the rest of us. No, 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 there's a very simple solution. If 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 I win the bet, a bit has to send Rita or around to my house. You know, again. Um, if he win, if he wins the bet, I I I I send. I'd send Peggy Mitchell around to his. <laughs> He'd love that. He'd love that. Yeah. It's yeah. just it right age awesome. for him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's move on. Um, Liverpool 2, West Ham 1. Um, <laughs> all right, where do we start? Uh I thought it was a bit of a boring match, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, <laughs> West Ham made it difficult. Um, I know you, Tristan, you did a, a match review on it. So, um, uh, and they were out there, Talisman uh, Antonio as well. Um, Tristan, do you want to do you want to just uh, elongate on your uh, elaborate on your match review, mate? It might be easier. Um, well, I was thinking it'd be easier to get because anyone who wants to know my thoughts could have just read the match review. But I mean, it was. Yeah, but to be honest, they, that, they so got the early be. goal and then they just sat back and invited trouble in the end. They just gradually got deeper and deeper, and in the second half, I mean, he, he took off. He, you know, it's, it was only in the like, like dying seconds when we scored. When we were one-one, he was taken off forwards to bring on defenders, and then when it when we scored the second, obviously he suddenly started having to change it. I mean, it's just it's Moyes' his own fault. He cost him. He cost them the t any chance of getting points from that game. The Haller's a bad player, though, wasn't he? The centre forward. He, to be fair, he lost heart the minute he he went up against Phillips, oh, and he no. thought he could bully him. And after he realised he's not going to bully this lad, he's just bit, you know, he, he tried, and then when is it? But he wasn't getting any service, so I'm I'm kind of torn know, whether but... it's whether it's him or the the way they play that doesn't suit him. He's not a striker. Let's be remem Let's remember he played behind Jovic. Yeah. In Germany, he played behind Jovic. He had a poacher in front of him. He was playing a number ten role, so he's playing out of position as well. So people are unfair on saying it's it's right. Okay. He's not playing his position at all. He's a he's a creator, not a finisher. Oh, and, right. they okay. long, and they were lugging long balls up at him as well. Yeah, that exactly. He's not a he's not a target man. It's not his game. 
Well, let's face it, lads. Liverpool aren't an easy team to play against either. They're the best team. Mm. The best team in the league at the moment. It's on, they're, they're sorry, I didn't get that. Could you say that, that again, Ken? Yeah. Ken, I didn't get that. What was oh, that? Sorry, sorry. I didn't realise I'd just state the bleeding obvious every two minutes. <laughs> 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 we just love hearing you say it, Ken. We love you love it. But but being yeah. champions, but being champions is gives you gives you the right to to claim yourselves as the best team. So Liverpool are the best team. They're hard to play against. That was a really hard fought win for Liverpool. I thought. We will we'll have to mention. I'll have to mention the elephants in the room now. The dive by Salah was absolutely despicable. I don't I love think the fella. So. I love I the fella. I so. do. And I think he's a fantastic human being as well as a fantastic footballer. But is there any need to do that? It just if we it, watch every game the game. same, Bill. Every game, Rashford did exactly the same thing in the last two games, and you don't hear a word about it. But maybe I don't expect it. Expect it. Of, it? Of How many times has Richarlison done it? Oh, absolutely and, loads. And, and, and I it every time. It's, it's fair sad to Billy. To be we're fair to, to Billy. He has always no, criticised Richardson I'm not, when he's I'm done just it. I'm just saying they're all doing it, and yeah. this is something that needs yeah. to be looked at. But okay, I just feel the outcry that, at Salah seems to be based on some because my outcry with Salah trip. because he's Muslim. I don't know, but he's no, no, no. getting my, that people like Rashford. My outcry with him is that he used to be, he used to do it all the time. When he was at Chelsea, he'd done it. And when he first joined Liverpool, he started it. Then he stopped. I don't know whether someone had a word with him, Klopp or whatever, and said, stop diving. Yeah, Klopp had done he it stopped. Klopp in Chelsea. He never did it at Chelsea. He never got onto the pitch. He saw <laughs> no, when... the goals for them. Yeah. He just got on the pitch a bit. Well, I expect the better of him because he's a, he's, a, he's a really good footballer. He doesn't need to do that. Um, the problem is, listen, you get so kicked glad. from pillar to post when you, people like him and Mane, they get kicked from pillar to post all game without getting a single decision. And you just think sometimes they just seem to think, oh, bollocks, and just throw themselves down and scream for no reason when they're but, not even, they're barely touched. And you're thinking, yes. you could understand it if it was time when you were actually kicked. Why are you doing it when you're not? It's so frustrating. That's what every, I think about it. Billy, every yeah. single Billy, so footballer. Great. Every single footballer is a cheat. Yeah, yeah, great. With yeah. That. Right. Simple. Now, there's degrees of cheating. Every time a ball goes out of play, both players put up their hand. My ball. Box. Yeah. Walk away if it's not your ball. Yeah. Same. And and I just cheating is or, or, or diving or feigning injury and rolling around and all that is just a it's just a, a higher profile version of that. The game and referees are treated with. Absolutely no respect by the players at all. Mm-hmm. The vast majority of players show no respect to referees, no respect for their opposition, no respect for their own teammates at times because they're cheats. <laughs> Simple as that. Ken, and- can I just say that? Uh, I know I know a one pro- a professional footballer who I know personally. He actually told me that when he was at Blackburn Rovers, he got taught to do it. Yeah. Actually, coached to do it, which it sounded incredible to me at the time when he told me. I couldn't believe it. Well, did he play he actually, under Kenny Dadleish? Did he play under Kenny Dadleish? No, he played under Graham <laughs> Souness, actually. Yeah, well, it had to be one of them. But it's honestly, anyone, all players do it. Rashford does it. <laughs> Rashford does it. Coach. Fernandez does it. Salah does it. Grealish <laughs> does it. But I, well, I tell you what, I don't want to read. I don't want to read any more about Grealish being a diver unless you're going to mention Salah and the same name. Yeah. The same that's... way. No, no. Listen, listen, mm, listen. I'm you. so glad you guys... Have, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you mentioned it because MK Scouser did come out of it on the site this week and he made a valid point about divers. So, Billy, I'm glad you mentioned it initially. I just think it's... Listen, I don't think it's a... It's not a... It's not. It's a footballing disease. It's we can't give it a nationality, a religion, or a gender, whatever. I think it's just a footballing disease. It's Correct. crept in, into the English game. Yeah. And this, it may not, not sure have been there crept. twenty, Dennis thirty Law years. Was ago. Very fond of going down easily, even back in the maybe. You know, he maybe played. Dennis Law was an exception. And, and no, Kenny was, Dark Leash used to win penalties by backing into players and then throw, fall into the ground when they pushed him. You know when he was backing. Unbelievable. Like I mean, Dark Leash was for years. The biggest diver going. Yeah, though it's, and he was, just, he was just one of every single player has yeah, always done it. 
let's let's I agree, not give it. I an, agree, Tristan. But let's not give it an anti-foreigner narrative because that's just bordering on no. like Zena. Yeah. But you know, it's they all do it. They all do it, and maybe they it's been. It. It's Listen, been, MK it's been are, exaggerated now. It's I, been exaggerated. I, I, I talk to MK scouts are nearly every day on a group chat. He's the one of the most biased people I have ever come across. <laughs> He thinks football was invented in 2016. Right? <laughs> he's, uh, the, honestly, and he's a good friend. He's a, he's a nice lad. And he is just biased. He can't see past the nose on his own face. Every player does it. At every club. Nothing to do with nationalities. Nothing to do with anything. Now, the Absolutely. press coverage, yes, ha- however, the press point. coverage of it is, you know, the English player's never get slated or certainly not to the same degree right yeah. and but what do you think happens in italy well, you, do you what do you think happens place? in france no i'll tell you what happens they don't criticize their own and they criticize the yeah. next man that's just the way it is so get over it mk scouser <laughs> tune into the podcast and get over it <laughs> what? i like mk scouser he's a nice guy oh he's a top, he's a top lad Mad as a box of frogs, but a really nice... <laughs> but honestly, he does think football was invented in 2016 when Liverpool won the European Cup. That's... I, just, I think we can I say that Liverpool well deserved to win the game, didn't he? Yeah, they had a lot of chances. Yeah, they, they did. Top, it was... And they never Tom offered Tom the second half. It was a you turgid know, you know game, it was, though. It was, it, was a win of, it was a win of champions. I've, yeah, I've, right. I've, I've, really been, I've been watching now. it for the last... I was watching it for 20 years under Ferguson. Mm. There's games you don't play well, but you find a way to win. And you know what? It's not even that you're finding a way to win. He's getting a fella like Jota to to actually play above what he was playing before he came yeah. to Liverpool. I like that kid. That's, oh, yeah. that's the sign of a, a really good manager, a really good coach. Come And it's so easy a lot of the time to come into a... A team. If, if if he comes, if Jota signs from Man United in the morning, he looks shit. That's <laughs> just the way it is, because because he's going into the right environment, the right time, the right manager. He makes people, he makes players believe they're better than they are, and and you see that. You really will see that because when you look at the the sign or the the players that Ferguson ever sold in all his time, the Danny Welbecks, the Cleverleys. Those guys were playing for England when they were at Man United. They were scoring goals and they were playing well. Once the they're taken out of that environment... He made the Japanese fella very, very good. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Kagawa? Kagawa? Yeah. Kagawa? No, he, he was... He was, he was a flop. He was a flop. Like you're, you're talking about Sun, Jisung Park, I think. The, the Korean Park, Jisung, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. really good, but yeah, he was yeah. good yeah, before yeah, yeah, he joined them. To be yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, go on. Go on, Ken, you were saying... Okay, Good so managers you... get players to play above their level. And I, I, I think Klopp has players at Liverpool. There's that young lad, Jones, in midfield. There's the guy who came in at centre-half, you know, who'd never played before. He's, once you're playing for a manager who makes you feel 10 foot tall, you actually go out and play like you're 10 foot tall. Simple as that. And I think Liverpool, it was a win at Champions, and it, it was a... It was a really good omen for Liverpool that they can, they can, they they're going to turn those draws into wins because it's a different proposition playing as defending champions. Everybody wants Liverpool to lose now. Last year, everybody wanted Liverpool to win, but when you're champions, everybody else wants you to lose, and everyone tries that a little bit harder against you. So for Liverpool to win these games, these tight ones, that bodes well, in my opinion. Now let's talk about that, uh, Ken. Talk to me about um, the disallowed goal, the uh, the, uh, the the Jota just disallowed goal. What do you guys think about that? Because I don't, I think it was a much ado about nothing. There was a Roman orgy going on. The ball uh, ricocheted. So you didn't see, you in. didn't see the studs going into the cheaper, keeper's chest, face straight two inches from his face. You didn't see that. Which yet you can see Van Dyke getting a kick in the knee. Open your eyes. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm playing. I'm playing uh, devil's advocate here because I wanted you guys to dissect it. Yeah, that, that's so my opinion. It's a about, right. It, it, 
It was an assault on the keeper. That gets given nine times out of ten, to be honest with you. When, when a, a fella goes in on a keeper like that, he didn't t- try to hit him or nothing, but it, it oh. was rightfully disallowed for me. It, it happens. Yeah, keepers get loads of protection that way, then. But that wasn't what yeah. it was given for. That's the point. Well, what it was wasn't it disallowed for? for that. It wasn't disallowed for a foul on the keeper. It was disallowed for a foul on the player who kicked uh, whoever the defender was. Oh, right, I thought it was for the keeper. No, it was just, that's the whole point. That's why if it had been for the one on the keeper, everyone had been, nobody had ever really questioned it. That was the whole point. Everyone said, right. what foul? Oh, so... It wasn't disallowed for the foul on the keeper. That is the problem. And who's, who, who said that? The, the, uh, they said at the time, the VAR. They tell the you. The VAR don't they come out. The VAR the PGM they don't come out well, Tell you, they state what the de- what the decision is given for to the media companies, and then they come. Then after time, they come out of a different statement a few hours later when they realise, oh Christ, no, what have we done? You know, we've got that completely wrong. We should have said something else. You know what I mean? We should have. Done well, should have. Well, That's why we fans. get all these mixed messages all the time. No, I think it was disallowed for the right reason, but. No, it was disallowed for the foul on the defender. It wasn't disallowed for the foul on the keeper. If it had been fa- disallowed for the foul on the keeper, fine, not a problem with it. But it wasn't. Well, I wasn't even looking at that. I have to say, I I, I wasn't looking for a foul on the defender. All I know is no. the keeper got smashed yeah, off he, the ball. He, he slid into the keeper. That was it. That was yeah. a foul. But no. it wasn't what it was disallowed. They weren't even looking. If they, they, they wouldn't have needed two replays to look. You know what I mean? You'd have seen that on the first replays. He slid into the keeper. It's a foul. But they didn't yeah. give it for that. And that's my problem with it. That's well, why maybe, I can't maybe see the, what they've the, given. Did the, did, the, did, the did the foul on the defender happen before the keeper was hit, yeah? I, I didn't see a foul on the defender. That's my point. This is the problem. But but they don't have to give it for the foul on the keeper if they feel the foul on the defender was first. That's the one they've given. And if they hadn't have given that one, they'd have given the foul on the keeper. But that I think wasn't it was rightly, but they weren't. I, on, I think it was rightly chalked off for the wrong reason. That's what I think. Yeah, I agree with that, Abba. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, guys, while we're on the subject of Jota, it'd be remiss of us not to talk about him. Tristan, I want to get your opinion on Jota, because I know you said uh, a while, uh, a few days ago to me that he gets in people's ways. Yeah, he gets in best. other... Per- uh, uh, For both he gets sides. Into- right, I'm, so... The is that- problem is, what he's doing is, and which is why it, it all takes... You know, it's going to be a bit hit and miss with him playing for us for a while is he's making the same runs that Mane and Salah are making. So when the three of them are playing, they're all getting in each other, you know, they're getting in each other's way a bit. When it works, you know, when they figure it out between them and it works, it's brilliant and they're going to score goals because all three of them are making the runs into the box, you know, to get on the end of things. But when it doesn't work, they're going to get in each other's way, you know. There's, there, there will be times and it's going to keep happening. It's just the way, until he learns to play, to, you know, till they develop an understanding of each other's games, there's going to be mixed performances where sometimes he's going to be in everyone's way or they're in his way, whichever way you want to look at it doesn't really matter. Give me an example. Give me an example. Well, sometimes in the other, I mean, there's, there's runs where they're, you know, where they're both running, making the same run. I mean, there's been a couple of times right. when Salah did, you know, took the ball when he could have left it for him because they were both making right. the same run to the same place. And they're so both they're finished at this, and that, this, and that's happened so quite a few times. So, but what you're yeah. saying, they're making runs into space that they're both in going into the same space, basically. Yes, they're both making. Like if if they if there's a first if there's a front post run on, two of them are making it yeah. rather than one now. And the back post exactly. Run, yeah, it's it's not a problem. Like, it's not a problem. You know why that is? You know why that is? Sorry, go ahead, Billy. And so you're going to get that with new yeah, players exactly. until you've better than any. It's, 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 it's a little bit different because Salah, Mane and Jota, none of them are centre forwards. They are all out to in forwards, as I would call them. So they're coming yeah, yeah. Off, they prefer yeah. to come off the line. Yeah. With Firmino there, he will, he will control that central... Well, not control it, but he'll put, patrol that central space. Hmm. Where Jota, he's reverting to instinct, and his instinct has always been out to in. Yeah. Where Firmino's instinct is to stay in. Um, 
and yeah. as a result, he, he he's not you know encroaching on on Mane's space or on uh, Salah's so space. Sure. But Jota will do that because it's his instinct. It'll be coached at him if he's going to play the central role. Um, and I think he's an intelligent enough player to, to 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 build that into his game. If you know to to stay out of other people's space, mm. he, he's hit the ground running at Liverpool. He gets it. He's the right type of player. He's a high energy, fit lad, technically quite good, decent finisher. Like there, there's a lot of strings to his bow. He he just uh, he he needs to learn that position. And I, I I'm. As a result, I'm not 100% sure whether the three of them are ideal. You, you probably do would prefer a, a more like-for-like like, uh, Firmino type replacement. And that's, that's obviously... Yeah, yeah that's, that's obviously why, um, you know, Klopp wasn't convinced about Jota in the first place, wasn't it? The, 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 his assistant was the one pushing for the, for the signing more so than Klopp. You lend um, it, yeah. Yeah, so it's like he, he's 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 hit the ground running. He's 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 doing a great job at Liverpool. Nothing's going to be perfect this, this early. I think he's fitted in really really well, and I'm gone off him already. Actually, <laughs> Glenn, thanks for bringing Firmino up because that's a great segue into um, talking about Bobby guys. So I mean, I Billy, I know your opinion already, but um, does he? <laughs> is it time to drop Firmino and bring Jota in? Or what no. do we do? I mean, it's. I mean, okay. So basically, I mean, I know this is the weirdest. Too many games it's... too close together to talk about dropping. Exactly, one. they're all going to have to be rotated for the rest of the season. It's that simple. Hang on. This is a ridiculous. Yeah. I'm talking. No, no, no. I'm. I'm talking about specifically for the City game now. Um, would he? I mean, listen. I know this doesn't mean much, but. He has now scored more goals. Joshua has scored more goals for Liverpool in 2020 than Roberto Firmino, despite playing 1,930 minutes less than Bobby. You know, so these are stats that you... They, they're frivolous, but you can't ignore them. Now, I'm just playing imagine. devil's advocate here. No, I, I understand that. But what I'm oh, saying yeah. is the guy, Yotta, Yotta is red hot at the moment. Bobby is not, right? And his performances are proof of that he's the output isn't there anymore the goals isn't there anymore the um the the, the whatever it, it, his performances have dipped and yotas have improved and are better than his he's scoring goals etc but what do you i mean and nobody's no listen i'm bobby's big, uh, biggest advocate nobody's but you've got to ask the question right you can't just dismiss the question and say oh it's not a problem it's not relevant might... because it's going to come down to the only reason bobby was dropped at, the, at this game was because he was in the red zone as they call it and that's what's going to decide who plays in Every game this season, it's going to come down What's to... What's the red zone? That he's, coming, he's nearly he's out, injured. He needed a rest, yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah, what's yeah, going to yeah, decide yeah, every You're working at the end of your, yeah. your tether there. And yeah. that's what's almost yeah. every team selection that's been done by every club in the country at this, you know, for this season is going to be based on who's got, who can play the full 90 minutes and then who are we going to have to squeeze an extra performance out of that really could have okay. done with a rest? Because we haven't got 11 players. That okay. Forget, 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 red zones. forget red zones. Every, what's the good zone? What's the one where they all complain they're all fit? The well, blue zone? All right. All right. No, 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 Basically, they're both fit. And they're both fit. Who would play? Yeah. They're both perfectly healthy. Who would play? That's, oh, that's see, not... A, it's well, not you see, not Liverpool are in a situation now, really, where there's... What, what is there in the now in the season? 60 games, pretty much, right? In a 60-game season, if you look at all the stats, there's very, very few players... Very few Premiership players that play more than forty. Right, very few. So, if you've got four forwards at Liverpool for three positions, that's forty starts each. Simple as that. Yeah, but Ken, I get the, that. I get that. Right, let's go back. Work. Let's go back to your question, right? All right, the Champions League final. We're five. So we've what? had a, everybody's had a. Pre 
We're, everybody's had a pre-season. We're all fit and healthy. Champion League's final, five games into the season. Everybody's fresh. Who do you play? Yota yeah, or Firmino? Players. Players. Exactly. It's yeah, not it's just disappointing this conversation because it just depends on who's been playing well in the, you know, the previous weeks. So that's Yota yeah. then? So he, he plays against City, is that what you're saying? Well, not necessarily. Well, no, no because Mane might, might play. Mane might be in the red zone. Or yeah. Salah okay. might be okay, in the okay, red okay. zone. But Salah and Mane Even are not in the red zone. Champions Everybody... League final, you'd still have to look at that. Of course you do. Okay. That's Pochettino and Mane. It's Burn. All right, no, it's, 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 Man uh, it's, it's Manchester United or Arsenal or Everton. Yeah, but Everybody's fit and healthy. It doesn't work like that, Abby. That's the point we're making. And this is the this is it, why it's so. This is why I can't be asked with the conversations on the no side because they are anymore. talking about things that they're talking about it in isolation, like you're trying to do. When it doesn't work like that, it's. But I'm I'm giving you a hypothetical situation, and I know you're saying it doesn't work like that because it could be conceivable that Bobby and Yotta are fit to play Saturday, and they're both rearing to go. Well, my answer is very What's... simple. My answer to that's really simple. Right? You might pick Jota if the match is next Saturday because he's, he's, he's as you say, he's hot at the moment. So you keep him in the team if you can. And, but three months ago or two months later, I might give you a completely different answer. But for this particular match, next weekend, for me, if everybody's fit and available, Jota's in the team because he's hot. Now, Mane, for me, is well off the pace. Yeah, he was struggling. Is miles below his best. And I'd be tempted to play Firmino and Jota and Salah. Because for me, Mane has been poor since he got the virus. Maybe he got it worse than others. But he's definitely been affected. His form is poor. His energy is poor. His track and back is poor. Um, sorry, when I say poor, it's against his own yeah, impeccable high standards. He's, he's fallen below his own impeccable high standards in his game contribution overall. And I think, it's, I think it's an after effect of the virus because I can't think of another reason. Yeah, I was thinking that. Because against West Ham, I've never seen him give away the ball so much as he did. Constantly. Yeah. First half, I don't think he played a pass to a, to a red shirt. Not one. <laughs> no, so he's garbage. Could it be a Yota? so... But it could, could it be your... be he, him that gets a rest? Because he does look like he's not yeah. himself. That's well. what, that's what I'd be doing for next weekend because you got to play form players. Mm. And sometimes when when someone like Firmino, and I, I don't call him dropped, I call him rested. I'm with you on that one, Tristan. I don't believe he was dropped. But because there's so many games, as I say, mm. if you can get any if you can get any three of that four on the tee, on the pitch every week. That's huge, right? Absolutely huge. If you've got three of them fit every week, so it's 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 just a matter of horses for courses. Who's fitting the time? And for Mino, I'm looking at him if I'm Klopp, and I'm thinking, right, kid, we've got City on Sunday. I'm going to put you straight back in because you're out of the red zone. But I want the reaction. Yeah, you got to remember, he was the one that had been flying away with Brazil, playing in internationals. Well, Mane and Salah. We're back at I'm, you know back at not I was going to say Melwood then but obviously it's not anymore it's just, it's just the Kirby training centre training so you know there's, there's no wonder yeah. he's in the red rather than those two. I understand really? your question and it's it's one of those real hypothetical ones who plays who shouldn't play who the, but for me there's no first there's really no first eleven anymore mm. if you're a, if you're a proper football squad there's sort of fourteen or fifteen players that you should be. Saying if I have eleven of those fourteen or fifteen players every week, I've got my strongest team. Yeah, this, the only ones that play every week these days tend to be goalkeeper and the centre backs. Yeah, that's it. Anybody else is interchange should be interchangeable. But well, I you guarantee know, you, know. you. Look at the stats. Look at the stats over the years, and you you'll be shocked at the amount of player, players that don't play over forty games in the sixty game season. Mm. You just okay, don't. Yes. It's really impossible. One Liverpool question to finish with. Um, Tristan, I'm going to get your point. I want to get your opinion on Reese Williams, how he's doing. Mm. And is he the, is he the Messiah? <laughs> Personally, I, I, I thought Nat Phillips is a much better player. 
Um, Williams does not impress me at all against, um, you know, in this week. Every chance they had came when they were just running off him and he wasn't he wasn't aware at all. He's got no awareness and he's slow, far too slow. No, not for me. I, I, for me, he's the first to, first car, you know, first player to be replaced. Don't think he's good enough. I just don't see. He just doesn't show any sign of awareness. He might come good enough in time, you know, when he learns to roll. But right now he's slow and he's not aware of what. Mate, he's you're gonna, to mate, you're gonna have to start. Mate, you're gonna have to start again from when I asked you the question because you dropped. Well, you couldn't hear anything me. you I said. Could see basically, I, I, I did a wait to you, so. I'll have oh, then work on. Okay. Work on. So basically, I'll start. I'll try. I'll ask you again. Tristan Reese Williams, the Messiah, or not? No, definitely not. It's too slow, okay. and he doesn't understand. You know, he doesn't see what's happening be- around him. He's got no awareness whatsoever. Every attack was just going in behind him. You could see even then... Gomez covered across for him so many times when he shouldn't have had to. Williams should have. How been... many EPL games has he played? Or Champions League games? Only, it's, only, it's, it's only his first. You know, it's only his first season. But what I'm saying is, for now, you've got Phillips yeah. there who's doing better. Looks a much better player. He's got more experience. He's got he's got faster pace as well to recovery pace to make up for if he does make a mistake. He's got to be you know if you've got a choice of the two. So in the league, you've got to pick Phillips out of the two. But uh, I, I Williams can't, can't play, play in the league. Williams, Williams can't can play in the league. league. Phillips can't play in Europe. That's play in the Champions fast. League. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Yeah. Now let that's me one more question. We've Do we? Got. Do we sign a centre half in January, or do we go with what we've got? Even though Williams is a weak link in the Champions League, well, and Phillips January, can't play in the Champions put League. Back in there, you can change ah, the squad. Okay. So that doesn't in January. Yeah. So we, if Phillips so, has uh, done it, so Phillips has got until January to <laughs> prove himself. You know, prove he's uh, up got the medal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He could start the other day. I thought he had a really good game against West Ham yeah. actually. Yeah, exactly. He's he's very, I like to. I watched bits of him in Germany, like not much, but bits of him because obviously they they were Bundesliga twice. But like he he, he looked good. I mean, he helped him win, win promotion and looked like he was you know a bit better than. Whereas when I watch Reese Williams, I just see a player that's very good on the ball but can't defend. Yeah, I think I think it's too early to tell for either of them to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, and I just think yeah, the only way you can tell is by. By them having games, they've got lucky, both of them, because neither of them will be within an arse's roar of the team if, <laughs> if everybody... Would. No, no, that, no, that's very that's true. true. That's Listen, yeah, I, yeah. and I don't knock that. I mean, that's how Rashford got into the team. Exactly. That's how no. Young Williams got into the United team. Like that, That's how kids often get in if, they, if, yeah. if, if, there's, a, if there's a big injury crisis. But, but to be honest with you, neither of them have... Well, Williams, I think, is 23, isn't he? No, well, no, just, no, yeah, the, the fellow with the beard, whoever, sorry, the, the guy with the beard, Phillips, he's 23, so he's getting to the stage where it's time to shit or get off the pot, you know well, what I mean, he's got to try and get, a, get a game. In the summer, but it, the, the move fell through. So the fact that they were going to sell him tells me he's probably not well, that's top, why, top guy. Yeah, that's but, why he wasn't but, in the, uh, the Champions League Champions squad. League squad. Yeah, so Tanji's not top, top class. But having said that, there's loads of players that when they fluke their way into a, into a, an opportunity, mm. made the very, very most of it. And I wish him well, actually. He's, I, I was impressed with him. I, I liked him there the other day, actually. I thought he had a great debut. I thought he was, I thought he was the, the senior partner in that Liverpool centre center defence last week. Well, he had to be because uh, they played on him. They tried to take it to him, and so he was ending up having to be the one taking the, you know, fighting with every, for every ball, while Gomez acted on the cover. Yeah, I, 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 I thought it was a really good debut, and yeah. I, I was, I was, I, I, be, I was more impressed watching him in that game than I have ever have been watching Williams. Definitely. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, anybody want to mention the midweek game against Atalanta? I just thought uh, while we. Uh... Well, I think we. Finish Liverpool up. enough, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. Look, Jada's on fire and keep him in the team. And to be honest with you, Liverpool are are, are beginning from a from a as I say from a non-supporters' point of view. They look like they're beginning to click. 
you gonna... into a little bit of rhythm. No, no, listen, nowhere near their best. No, 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 no I was but... just going to ask, do you think that the problem in that game, though, was more that Atalanta seemed a bit overawed? I mean, they had the big banner up when, you got, when Liverpool got there saying what an honour it is to have you here. I don't know if you've seen it. They that yeah. put up a big banner saying what an honour it is to have you at our stadium and or words to that effect and things like that and and they didn't play to their level so I'm I, I'm not sure that Liverpool no. were clicking so much as Atalanta just like but you know lost. I know, but I'm talking about headlights. in general. I'm talking about in general over the last three ah, right, or four okay. games. Oh, yeah. Liverpool, I just see a little bit more rhythm in their play. And, you know, it's it's amazing. It's a very broken Liverpool team at the moment, particularly around the midfield when I say broken there, there just doesn't seem to be the same well, repetition of players, you know Well there's um, so many, t- the, t- you know, the players getting injured and out with COVID. That's what I'm saying, he hasn't been able to name a settled side, you know Yeah, that's. But do you think it's helped <coughs> having Van Dyke go out go out because it's brought the team together to in reaction. No, never helps, never helps no. losing a world class. No, I wouldn't say, I'm not, I'm asking the question rather than, because it seems like sometimes teams react by picking up their game to make up for not having their, like when, you know, sometimes you watched Barcelona in the past because they were, when they were a great side and Messi was out, you just see the other players pick up their game. When I Messi, think, I think, because they rely I agree with too that. Much. I think players will pick up their games because there's that mentality in the squad and, and, and club fosters that mentality. But um, I think others will play better, but I don't... I don't I, uh, what I'd be saying to them is play better when Van Dijk is in the team and yeah. then we've no problems, you know? It's, yeah. um, Van Dijk, is, Van Dijk so he will prove to be a loss. It will cost them points somewhere along the line. And... That that's going to happen, but it's it's. I don't think it'll happen too often. I think I think I think they'd be all right, yeah. Just as a footnote on the Atalanta performance, Atalanta performance. Klopp said, "I don't think it would have mattered what formation uh, Atalanta would have put out. We'd have beaten them. Played that night." Um, all right, guys, let's move on. We've had. Uh, I think we've uh, we've done Liverpool enough. Um, let's go on to uh, Aston Villa three, Southampton four. What a crazy uh, game that was. Yeah, Billy, did you watch it, mate? Yeah, no, well, well, I watched some of it. Yeah, it it was quite interesting actually. It was a a game of more mistakes than actual great play. I thought, great but, play. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was good. It was a good one to watch, wasn't it? You know, it. But we're getting results like that every week. It seems, isn't it? That you know. Yeah, but when they it, Southampton to... looked a much better side than Villa, but they just seemed to lose. Into, you know, once they get, they just seem to lose their their intensity. So shall we say? Because that seems to be the word everyone's using. Do you think that's yeah. down to the lack of fans that they just didn't have the same? Because I mean, t- teams do it anyway when they get a big lead. You see, teams sometimes they just sit back and they can throw away a good position because of it. But it just felt, well, to like, be it honest, felt a bit like that with Southampton, that they thought it was a bit, they'd had it won and they just lost. Yeah, I agree with you on the crowd, Tristan. I don't. I think that nobody plays with the same sort of uh, ferocity when there's no crowd there. But to be honest with you, the, res- the result makes it look a lot crazier than it was. Mm. Villa scored two goals in the 97th and 94th minute or something. So... Yeah. It really wasn't that crazy a game and that tight a game. So it had the boss to really from start to finish. They were never looking in danger of losing the game or losing their points. Villa just got a couple of what I would consider to be late consolation goals. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I think they dropped off. I think they lost concentration, Southampton. And look, on another day, they could have been punished and, 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 and only drawn the game. But for me, they were they well out. They ran out worthy winners, and and the result makes it look a little bit more intense and crazy than it was. I mean, it was four one with nine after ninety three minutes. You know, yeah, yeah. They're playing very well, Southampton, though, aren't they? They uh, be, I'd be very impressed with them. But now, yeah, the, you know I like the, I like that the that you play for Chelsea. Romelu, is it? Okay. 
Yeah. Romeo. Romeo, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Romeo, he's is he a, Romeo? I, I, really, a, I, think, I, I think he's a midfield really generalist. Player isn't he? Hmm? He's a midfield general, isn't he? He picks up a lot of fouls as well. He breaks up a lot of plays. Sometimes you think you look at him and I think he's a really good player, but he, when they play badly, he seems to always be terrible. And he seems to struggle against the bigger clubs because he lacks mobility. Really badly lacks mobility. And he gets yeah, caught he's out not very they, quick around Yeah, the he gets caught out when they play the bigger clubs. I think that's a lot of why they lose those games. Yeah, I, I think he's a really good player for them. I really do. I think he's, he, he he's as you say, he, he's not the most mobile and he can get caught out against the best opposition. But I think I think him and Walt Prowse, I love Walt Prowse, have done for years. I think he's a cracking player. His delivery is excellent. Yeah. As, but his overall play is, is, he's a really tidy player. He's a high energy player. He's box to box. Yeah. He's, he doesn't roll around it. He's a sort of player that will be welcome, and he'd fit into any of the top top clubs and, and get into their squads and make a real valuable contribution to any top team in England. I'd agree with did, that. Um, did Danny Ings um, got did he injure his knee? Or is he okay? Knee. He's out for a surgery time. today. He needs surgery today. Mm. He's out for six weeks at least. He had surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Six weeks. Six weeks. It was oh, only. Yeah. I think it was a tidy up. Uh, it was a bit of a tidy up. Minor done, surgery. Yeah. Yeah. But six weeks anyway. Poor guy. Poor guy. Oh, um, he's been scoring. He's been on fire. When you talk about players on fire, he's another one. He's been having an excellent few. You know, a couple of yeah. Seasons, and, hasn't he? An excellent yeah. eighteen months. An excellent eighteen months, Tristan. And, and yeah. no, like. Southampton are a good side. He's scoring goals. If when you look at them, they like they sold their defensive midfielder there in, in Holberg or whatever his name is. But he's 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 got a lot of what I would call workmanlike players there. But their ability is tidy. I mean, they've got good ability. Some of these lads, and they're just very understated. I, Do you think? I'm, sorry, go on. Sorry, sorry go ahead. No, I was just going to ask, you think they'll struggle with our Ings up front to score the goals? I do, well, yeah. Well, that's where they always struggle before. Didn't Shane Long or something go a year and a half oh, without God, scoring Shane a goal? Or something? just dreadful you know, as a striker. You know. Works I, hard. I mean, You'd love to see, I'd love to see him turn into a top striker because of the amount of effort he puts in on the pitch, but he's just terrible. You put him in front even of the goal effort. and you don't know where it's going to go, do you? No, his effort... Even his speed is beginning to subside a yeah. wee bit now. He's not the out of pace. So, look, I think. Great I, 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 who else have they got? Though? Yeah, he's good in the air for a small guy. What? 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 Who else have they got? Um, who's the other striker? Oh, what's his name? Is it? Oh my God! What's his name? The other guy. They've oh, Jay a... Adams, isn't it? Yeah, Jay Adams. Jay Adams. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> he ain't, he ain't going to score the goal. Score, he's a little bit. He? He, he's not a great goal scorer. So. No. Is it Che Adams? I think it is. So Yeah, and Obafemi I, is the other one. The yeah, he's another young Irish kid. Uh, so, no. Conley, no, I you're think, thinking of, no, Obafemi's not the Irish one. You're thinking of Connolly, aren't you? Yeah, from Brighton. Why, why isn't Obafemi Irish? I thought Obafemi was um, English. No, he plays for Ireland. Does he? I thought he was yeah. English. Obafemi's and... Irish. Is yeah. He? Michael him... Obafemi. He's yeah. Irish. Oh, I thought I saw him yeah. in the England under 19s. No, 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 no. He's he's a full Irish international. He's um, no, I don't... he's um, I don't watch international. He's only nineteen. He's only nineteen or twenty as well. Yeah. So he's he, he, no. I think you're right, Tris. I think they could struggle to score goals because I mean, Long isn't prolific by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Maybe it's no, but he's, he's only, he's only just scored train. about the same amount of goals in the Prem as I have. Has he Shane Long? And and over Femi <laughs> and and. So yeah, they 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 don't have that prolific striker. It's it's a little bit like um, uh, last year with Burnley when when what's his name Ashley Barnes was scoring every week. Yeah. Once w once one of those teams or Crystal Palace, you know, if it's Saha or AU, once they have their centre forward getting their sort of fifteen to twenty goals or that sort of region, those teams will be safe. But take that centre forward away, they're all suspect. Yeah. Every single one of them. 
I I I got a stinky feeling that uh, Southampton will uh, uh, get a striker in January. I just think they need it just to, like you say, just to keep preserve that Premiership status because the other two, three that you guys mentioned, they're not, as you say, they're not prolific, and I wouldn't trust any of them to keep me in the Premiership. Oh, yeah, they won't be they've looking got a kid stay. in their youth team. I don't know who they. Who's... I bet they won't be looking for kids to just stay in the in the. Uh, Europe, in that's the what I meant, by the They'll way. They'll be done for this top half, yeah. Southampton. I'm convinced. Yeah, exactly. That's what that's, I was gonna. Yeah, I was gonna say that. That I, I misspoke. That I, they were trying to get into Europe. They want to kick on. So they probably they, they'd be good for them to buy a strike to kick off and get into Europe. Billy, you're right. Yeah. The very good side. And uh, just one more uh, thing on Southampton. I know you mentioned it uh, uh, a while back, Ken. Would you be happy with uh, Hassan Tal at uh, United? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All right. All right. We'll get on to I that. Wouldn't out, I wouldn't rule out anybody. He's better than Solskjaer, isn't he? Okay. <laughs> right. let's, let's leave that one there. All right, Billy, it's your moment, pal. Newcastle 2, Everton 1. Oh, what a what a bad game. Uh, two bad teams. And I, I mean that. They, two, they looked awful, the two of them. They couldn't create a chance between them. I don't know how many shots were on target, but I bet it was less than one. <laughs> well, it must have been three if it was 2-1. <laughs> 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 the game finished 2-1, so... Three times the ball must have hit the Oi, target, Bill. I don't, I don't mean being, to try I... trouble you in the maths department, but... <laughs> he was being ironic, Tristan. I know. God, you're so Mr. Literal. Sorry, Billy. <laughs> I apologize. You know I'm no, a I have to get in there. <laughs> it's his OCD, Abed. It's his OCD. Yeah, it is. It <laughs> yeah. is very much so. Do you know what? Talking about the Everton game. Do you know what? I'm a, I'm a big Ancelotti fan, but I think he got it wrong last week. You know, he, he played, we, the style we played was to go out and not get beat. And I'm not looking for that as an Evertonian. And what, what they done was they, they keep playing the likes of Sigurdsson and, and uh, Delph. And to just not for how many times did he play backwards? I thought it was so frustrating to watch. And I swore more than Ken on on the match day. You know, <laughs> I, I really did. I was going mad at them. And I thought Ancelotti got his tactics wrong and I thought he got the players wrong. I loved the guy, but I thought he made a mistake on Saturday. So, Bill, who would you have chosen and what tactics would you have used? Obviously, the tactics... Well, uh, I'd have had Gordon in. I'd have had Gordon in on the left to replace right. Richarlison. Right, you know, because? But he, he gives you more options, more out balls. He's quick as well, and he put them under a bit of pressure. They were there to be beaten, Newcastle. They were. But now, you, Evan, you... Evan just never got going. He never now, got with going. with Richarlison, are you off Richarlison, or you want to switch in positions? Switch he's his out, position. He's out, suspended. He was out, suspended. Yeah. That's why they needed yeah. to replace him. Okay, got yeah, you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh yeah, we could have put Gordon there who gives you a bit more yeah. forward impetus. Uh, but we we had nothing to trouble him and uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin he he scored a goal, but besides that, he got no service whatsoever. And I still felt very sorry for him. He worked hard and he does work hard. But he never got no service whatsoever. And yeah, he's, he's a very good player, but he needs help as well. And go Is, am I wrong in suggesting that you played Tosin in this game at some point or not? He come on a substitute. Yeah, yeah. For the last yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But isn't that your problem? But Yeah, yeah. But isn't that your problem, Billy? You've got at least... There's a lot of players there that are earning a lot of money that are... Uh, Ken? What was that? Ken? I think that's Ken saying hello. (laughs) I'm confused. Has Ken gone off? He's got very quiet, so that's worrying. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
Go on, Abba, give The apartment must be sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Bill, what I wanted to say was there was about six. I know you've got, uh, you could reel probably more players off there, but you've got a, a players there that, don't deserve to be well, let alone in the uh, team. They don't deserve to be in the squad. So no. it's, there's basically a lack of personnel there. So I still, can you still there? You there, mate? Yeah, I'm just back. Yeah, oh, hey. All right, we were just talking about the uh, the players at Everton that shouldn't be there, and I was just asking Billy that. I just don't think you're um, justified in having making that statement yet, Billy, because I still think you're about six, a transfer window away from playing, having a very decent side. Do you get what I'm saying? Because there's still I, players that are going to play. I think there's more than one way, to be honest with you, Abed. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you probably you know, you can't right, play, two, You can't yeah. play Nina as centre-half. If you, if you want to do any good, you can't play Yeri Mina as your centre-half. And Noah Short and Holgate's out and Brantley's out, but we've got to replace uh, Mina. He's an awful player, awful player. That's why Carlo Ancelotti says he wants to stay for the long term because he likes the club. He's in lo he's in love with the city. But the thing is, he's got a sh shitload of work to do because the predecessor yeah, yeah, messed yeah. that club up so much. And you're right. I mean, I was wrong in saying I was an underestimation on my point one uh, transfer window. And you know what? It may even take two or three because of the coronavirus. You don't yeah. know what's going to happen in the uh, summer. So he's got... I've got mean, no doubt about that. It'll take at least three. Yeah, and I, I, that's why I say that I, I know it's a gripe. You want to play You want to play well every week and have a good settled side. But the thing is, it's just not possible at the moment. It may not be possible for another year. No, so, I, I don't want to play, 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 play. I don't play, mind about playing, play, not playing, you know... And all these winners. What I'm saying is, if the players are not producing, like Sigurdsson, like uh, like a Wobi, like Bernard, you know, yeah. get the kids in. Give Sims a, a go up front. He's doing brilliant for the under 20s. Give him a place rather than you know someone who's, who doesn't want to be there, which half of them don't. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I jump on that bus. I think it's a great show. A lot of them are there just for the wages. They're just giving up on football, in my opinion, or they're looking for another mercenary move. So you're right. Play no. the kids. I mean, what have you got to lose? They're not going to go anywhere while they're on the money that Everton are paying them because no one else is going to pay them that sort of money. 100000 a week. No one's going to take them on. They're not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're just going to have to cut your losses. I mean, it's incredible. Yeah. The fact that you've got Balassi at the club. Balassi, Balassi is more proficient on social media than he is on a football pitch at, the, uh, at this time. Yeah, it's is, yeah. insane. Yeah. It really is insane. I mean, to be fair, it, he's it, had it, a re he had a really bad few. Yeah, they did, yeah. Injuries, um. He's actually a nice guy, <laughs> Balassi. He comes across as a great uh, player, a great Evertonian, and he loves the club. And his injuries have been terrible, but in the end, he was a bad guy. You know, he was not even paid for him. Awobi is horrific. I know he is, yeah. He's got to go, hasn't he? But, as you say, we haven't got the personnel to replace them, really. That's why I'd give the kids a, sh a shout. Give the kids I a go. I don't see why he gets a game at all when you've got players like Gordon. No, I, c I can't. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was having a go at Ancelotti. I, I, that's why I'm having a go at Ancelotti. I don't know what's going on with him and Gordon because he hasn't been playing for the last few weeks. And when he's when he's come on or, or started, he's been really good. And... You know, why play a Ruby all the time? You get nothing from him. Why not just put Gordon in? Yeah, um, listen, I can't argue with that, Billy. So frustrating, Evan. No, frustrating. What's your opinion on Davis, mate? What, mate? Tom Davis, what's your opinion? Uh, a bit, bit lightweight for me, Tom. Uh, I think he is to do well at... A lower Premiership club. I know I'm being cheeky there about Everton being a better club. 
but he is a he's a bit lightweight for me, and he gives the ball away too much. Love the lad, local lad. You always want to see them do well, but Tom just hasn't produced the goods when he's beat, when he's got his chance. I want him to. I want him to be good, and he might come good in a couple of years. You don't know, but at the moment, he's not good enough to be in the side. For me now, your recruitment has to be what a ninety to a hundred percent because. For, for, you like Alan Decore, you, you know, this is the type of hits that you've got to make in the transfer market because there's yeah. so much dead wood there now. It's unbelievable that, I mean, obviously, I, I mean, you, you, I, I was quite impressed with that keeper. What's his name? Olsen? Olsen, yeah. yeah. Right, Robin Olsen. Yeah. I mean, He's doing really well. But that's another thing I don't didn't like about Carlo at the weekend. You know, come in Olsen and have a game. And then he said, but you're not playing next week, Pickens back in. How do you pick a side like that? If he does well, you stay in. And it's up to Pickford then to to come and take him out the side. But he gave him a free reign and I didn't like that. Now, that's not going to do exactly. I to- wholeheartedly agree. Because that's not going to do Pickford any good in the long run. Either. He's If he's thinking, well... If my punishment is only what give being dropped for one game, then he's not going to pick up his game. Do you get what I'm saying? There's going to be no yeah, threat to it there. The only thing is, he's seen how good how, how good Olsen done on his on his debut, and it might say it might say to him, "Listen, this kid's good. You know, he could replace me." I don't know. Yeah, I, I know you went in for was it you went in for Romero? Uh, there was a last minute deal for Romero that fell through. Yeah, United. Yeah, we yeah. went in for him. Go on, mate. Sorry. That would that would have been a good thing for Everton, and it would have been a good thing for United, I believe. Listen, <laughs> if it would have been a great thing for United, it would have been a great thing for Everton. Um, all I know is, is is that if Jose Mourinho treated a player the way Romero's been treated, <laughs> he'd have been dragged down through Manchester uh, I think you're right, uh, the back of a car. Absolutely. The player has been treated disgustingly by the by, by Solskjaer and by the club in general. He played all the way up to the semi finals in the in the in both cups, gets dropped for both oh. of them. Sorry. For no reason. Right, then he wants to move. Oh. Henderson comes in and takes his his number two jersey, gets a contract, a mental contract for for a reserve keeper on a hundred and some grand a week, and Romero can't get a move, and he's he, he's he's priced out of a move. It's just wrong, and he's just been treated despicably, despicably. Yeah. It's embarrassing, actually. I find it embarrassing. Uh, as, as we treat one of our own uh, and I mean he, it wasn't as if he was a Schweinsteiger who came in for big big money and didn't put in the effort or anything like that the guy has been sitting on the bench for four years plays his cups and to be fair to Mourinho at least when they were going out to win the, the Europa League he played in every round up to the final and he played them in the final and they won you just can't treat employees like that. And I'm telling you, if it happened in any other business, you'd be sitting up in the high court. Yeah, I agree, can you? Um, go, okay. Um, the but Ali scored uh, the goal in, in 1999, so he's allowed to do whatever he wants to people. Yeah. <laughs> you're next, I promise, pal. I promise you're next. Um, but let's go back to the uh, Everton Newcastle game. So, Billy, um, what what is it? Pickford out for the rest of the season. Olsen in or no? Pickford's back against Man United on Saturday. He's been told he's back in, and Robin Olsen is back on the sidelines. Why I don't oh, know. Listen, that's for that's great for everybody apart from Everton and Man United fans because. Uh, Everton will probably win and uh, Ole will keep his job. But I'm coming to you next, Ken, I promise. Just one more question <laughs> about the Newcastle game. Um, Callum Wilson, guys, uh, discuss. Yeah, he done well. I didn't think it was a penalty, I'll be honest with you. But he got the penalty. But he done well. He worked hard. He's a hard worker, that lad. Um, good yeah, he's a good journeyman, sort of <coughs> leads the line well, takes the knocks. 
doesn't score an awful lot of goals. Um, you know, a little bit like Bamford. He's a decent striker. He'll do okay. He'll lead the line reasonably well for him. He'll, he'll do okay. And he, he, he seems like a, a, a decent sort of a chap as well. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be glad for him if he does well, to be honest. Yeah. Good. I don't think Trish is with us oh, at the no, moment. Oh, sorry, I was... Oh, sorry. I was, Go on. I, I, just, uh, I just think he's just an average uh, forward, isn't he? He's, he works hard, does his job, but he's never going to He's never gonna be top class. So. No. He's, Fair enough. I'm just... It's the rest of the Newcastle team that I think the problem is. <laughs> I think... Yeah. I, th- I think I think Steve Bruce will keep them up though. I think he'll keep them keep them up. But the, you know the money they've spent, they should be better than that. But he seems like he's just going out there not to lose again. Every game against teams that are already that are struggling as well, that you're thinking this is your chance to pick up a win. Well, did he not just pick up a win? <laughs> no, but what I mean is, he's, I mean he's not going out to win. He's going out for a draw and hoping. When, Listen, you know, he's a, he, str- he, and you're thinking this he's is a, a chance to actually go out and dominate a team. He's a bottom ten manager. They don't know how to go out and dominate teams. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't come with the mindset. Don't get me started. I compare him to someone. Two stars. <laughs> Rafa Benitez, the former man. That's how you were going to say. <laughs> after all, Rafa was getting crucified for trying to defend, whereas Steve Bruce is being lauded in the media. I just don't understand it. Oh, yeah, it's not me. Maybe they like Steve's nose better. He's a nice guy, Steve Bruce. So that probably helps. Oh, he's very friendly one, with one. all the media, isn't he? So, I met him. I met him a couple guy. of times actually. A lovely bloke. He looks like he's been hit with a dustpan yeah. lid, but he he he's a really nice, really nice guy. Good sense of humour, and yeah, he's a really nice fan. Oh yes, he's just one of those people you can't help but like, even they, even when he was playing for Man United, which is you want to hate him. You know, when you're a kid, like, you yeah. want to hate someone who plays for your opponent, but you can't. There's some players yeah. you just can't. But he's, to be fair, he's he one of those, said he was You can see why he was a good captain. Oh, yeah, brilliant captain. He's perfect, because he's not just leads by example. He's not afraid to give someone a bollock in if they need it, but he's also someone that everybody's going to respect and like and listen to. Yeah, big time. Nice guy. He's also said he's trying to play winning football. But he needs personnel, so uh, that's uh, that's probably another reason why they they yeah, draw in a lot. Wasn't allowed uh, to be an excuse when it was Rafa Benitez. They were told constantly told it was Rafa Benitez's fault. It's all you hear in the media. I just don't understand why. When it's this, is what I'm saying, I just don't understand why can't, people can't aren't just a... saying the problem is Mike Ashley. That's the problem at Newcastle. Yeah, that's it managers. is. Yeah. Look, they, look, they haven't got one midfield player who you. Hang your hat on and say, "Geez, I fancy him a bit." Oh, not one. No, no, not one. Long staffs, I like. For ah, a mid-table long, Premier long. League, they should, you know, they should have been first choice every week, obviously. But wasn't one of them? They are as Scott McTominay. That's all they are. They can't pick a pass. They're, they're like they're, they're, they're workmen. Like they're not. They're not yeah, but that's, yeah, but all big fields need, need those. Talking about that yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, they can't go any higher, can they? The long staffs. They can't go any higher than what they are now. No, but, no, no I, but, but Michael Carrick and Ali were mad to sign one of them. Jesus Christ. Mm. All right, Ken. <laughs> um, <laughs> perform your... Yeah. Perform your... <laughs> Dr. Ken, perform your post-mortem. Cool, post-mortem. No, Man no. United nil, Arsenal 1. Turkish national team 2, Man United 1. Go on, perform your post-mortem, please, mate. There's no real post-mortem. <laughs> Anyone who's been listening to these podcasts will tell you I'm not in the least bit surprised. Uh, but being a Manchester United supporter, even though I want the manager fired in the morning... You always want your team to win. Always want the team to win. Yeah. Um, I have no doubt that oh, we spoke about it earlier. Ollie is a card for a mold of manager. He doesn't know how to set teams up. Like 
Manchester United have become underdogs, no matter who they're playing, because they play like underdogs. They are just dire to watch. And for my money, Ollie keeps our people keep telling me oh, Ollie loves the club. For my money, he's abandoned every principle that the club was built on. Mm. Manchester United don't go into games looking for draws. Of course, on occasion, Ferguson has gone out or Mourinho or Matt Busby or whoever will was has gone out to be defensive in a particular game. Every manager's done it. Klopp's done it. Pep's done it. They've all done it. But I'm talking about in general. He goes out every game. He sets his team up with this disruptive, defensive footballers in midfield. In Fred and McTominay or Matic. I think, uh, I think if he had his way, he'd play all three of them. Because Ken, they're the players he likes. Yes, mate. Talk to me about the Man United, uh, sorry, the Arsenal game. Uh, give me your thoughts on that, pal. Because there's two games we need to dissect here. There's okay, real quick. Real quick, the real quick on the Arsenal one. Yes, mate. Real quick one on the Arsenal. I thought, look, we hardly create a chance. He, 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 he picks a, an odd team. They're going in on the back of a great result against Red Bull Leipzig. Yeah, yeah. He's an opportunity to, to to carry some momentum into the game. And he just goes out defensive. I, I just, look, it, I, I've said it before. You look at his three assistant managers in McKenna, Carrick and Phelan. Yeah. Jesus Christ, none of them would be great crack at a party, would they? <laughs> like, they are just the least inspirational bunch. The four of them combined, they're the least inspirational bunch I have ever come across. Ever. They are dead. Let me put this to you, Ken. Let me put this to you, pal. All right. Your yeah. lineup against Arsenal, right, was De Gea, Wan-Bissaka, Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw. Fred uh, in front of the back four, McTominay, Pogba, Fernandez, Greenwood, and Rashford. From a lay point of view, that's not a bad team. I just think it's not a bad setup, but it's just a bad manager. Any uh, other managers, I think, would have got a lot more out of that team on that given day because. Uh, <laughs> um, me, mate. <laughs> because, because, mate. Because the Arsenal team, Leno, Holding, Gabriel, Turney, Saka, El Nani, Thomas, uh, Partish, uh, Bellerin, Willian, Lacazette, and Abangyam. Not the greatest football team in the world, you know? Listen, so, I, and they're out of form I, I, themselves. I, I, yeah. I'm just telling you that there's nothing surprising. He's just, Ollie is not a good football manager. He's not a good motivator. He's not a good speaker. If he speaks in any more cliche in interviews, if boy done well, my lads, this I put my foot through the TV. <laughs> he is not fit to represent Manchester United in any way, shape, or form since the day he hung up his boots. Good luck. Thanks for your service. Back off home to Norway. And he wasn't Good even first choice when he was a player. Let's be honest. But that's his mentality. <laughs> He has a substitute's mentality. He was never a top-class player. He was Manchester United's David Fairclough. And I don't see anyone offering David Fairclough Jurgen Klopp's job. <laughs> Honestly, God, he is think? a super sub. He's no David, David, David Can I ask you that, uh, if you think the players have got respect or they've lost respect for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I think there's a split camp in that regard. I think there's a few players who who buy into his memory and his his whole uh, persona of of the player he was, right? Um, particularly the ones that came through the club and had him as a you know as a coach early on in their careers and that sort of stuff. Um, but no, I, no, I don't think anyone like listen. You can't have respect for the fella in terms of. His ability. You just can't. He's, he's proven. He's a proven loser. And he shouldn't be there. But he is. And we just have to get on with it. 
And then you go into the next game where you're expecting a little bit of reaction, right? He picks a fucking different... Oh, sugar. No, I didn't say that. Swipe it out. He, he picks a different um, formation, a different setup. He drops Pogba, and then he brings him on a half time. He plays Van der Beek, who was the best player, best midfield player of the bunch, and he takes him off. They're losing at half time. He takes off a kid centre half and puts in uh, McTominay, who has all the creativity of a gnat. <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? like, and Matic to centre off. I mean, what was that? And Matic to centre half. I mean, when, he when, when you I, take I, off Matic if you're going to go more attacking. Don't start me. He uh, And then he comes out and says he had a yellow card. Come on, will you? So he's, he's like two and Zabi, the yellow card, and that played into it. No, it didn't. Stop talking nonsense. He is just useless. He said in midweek, he, he's happy with his players. They're 15th. You're not, you can't be happy with your players, you twat. <laughs> like seriously, this is Manchester United. You're not still in Malden. You're not like Cardiff. Honestly, if you, and if you love the club, Ali, and I'm appealing to you because I know you listen. I'm appealing to you. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the I'm only person he bloody does. Well, if, if he's not listening, send him a copy. <laughs> Ali, hey, we don't want if you love the club like you say you love the club, resign. Go home. Leave us alone. Thank Do you the other thing. <laughs> no, stay. You're at the no, wheel. I'll... Listen to Rio Ferdinand. He'll tell you. That they're offering you. Sign that extension. Yeah, you just no. don't. Do you put in whatever numbers you like, mate? No, like so... Rio said. No, no. Listen, mate. I, it's just. It's not good. It's no. It, no. He's, for me, he's a. He, he, he's taking the club back. To Moy's times. Right, well, before he, that, seventy four, I think you, you're in. Yeah, well, you're listen, in a he's, proper he, relegation he, issue here. Yeah? He's the only. He's the only manager apart from Ferguson and Moyes who've been at the club for two years not to get to a cup final. Jesus, like he's a not since nineteen seventy four. He's a joker. He is just no good at his game. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. I'm sure he's trying his hardest. But he's not good enough to do the job. What I and he know should be is, fired. Why does he not... Do, you know, when you can see things unfolding on the pitch, why is it all he does is look at his screen? Why doesn't he go and give instructions at some point? I mean, that first Listen, goal against... You know, the first goal you can see... You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't you get up off the Norwegian porn movie to start coaching your players. Point. But you got, <laughs> it you wasn't got my Norwegian porn there. movies on that telly, I'm telling you. Well, because yeah. he's not, that's whacking, gotta be what he's he's not whacking one out watching yeah. United play, that's for sure, mate. <laughs> but you've got oh. Mike feeling on the sidelines, and he's pointed at... Them before, but not actually telling anybody he's there, as if to say, I can't believe nobody's noticed him, rather than saying, Oi, come on, wake up to the players. I mean, what's that all about? Why, why weren't the entire bench rushing forward to scream at them to get back because Demba Bar was in acres? Why was nobody? I mean, where's the. Because they're watching Debbie Joe Dallas on the laptop. That's all. They're watching Debbie Joe <laughs> Dallas on the laptop. I'm not. He is you're, you're taught at seven years of age to mark the forward uh, at a corner. You know, at the uh, at, at, you can't. That is just the most ridiculous defending I've ever seen in my I, life. It to was let like Demba none Bar of them knew like who was meant to be back because Matic it clearly was, didn't realise he was meant. To, you know, clearly didn't think he was. If meant you to look be at the back. replay, if you look at the replay, when the corner was taken, Matic was on the D of their area. Yeah. He clearly was not meant to be the last man. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. He nobody knew who was meant to be back. It's and, and, okay. and I have I've been reading the site for the last couple of days. And I've seen every excuse under the sun from the four people who left who support on me, right? Is I've that seen many? Yeah, I think there's four. 
Are you I'm... sure it's not one person with four names? <laughs> well, no, it's both, it's both sets of grandparents. The could well be. The could well be one person. <laughs> Has he got oh, no, it's very, it's very poor, it's very frustrating, but look, it is what it is. They, they, I mean, you just got to hope he's fired sooner rather than later. Who takes the okay. job is the next question, and well, to be I, honest I, with you... I was just going to say something, this is before you go before you get into that bit. I just read, because I just thought I've been editing in between while we're doing this, this the uh, recording, like every so often I'll do a bit. And I just could have proposed on, on the United, this just came to somebody saying, can't understand why all the hysteria about these two bad results, because he got, fi- you know, you can't be a bad manager if you got them kind of, you know, the good result against RB Leipzig and that. So obviously he's, it's fine. It's all fine because he did all right against RB Leipzig who collapsed. Oh, sure, listen, I've heard it all from, oh, we would no pre-season. We were very unlucky at the beginning of the season because, you know, some of the players yeah. were undercooked. Or because as if the pre-season was taken away from Manchester United Football Club and we were the only one not to get a proper pre-season. It was shocking. We were all locked into a dark room and sitting down in the basement of Gary Neville's hotel or something. The, 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 it was just bizarre stuff that you're reading. And it's very sad. But look, I'm, I'm not one. The minute the game's over, I, I just laugh about it. Because if you can't laugh at yourself or laugh at your club when it's shit, there's nothing you can do about it. I'm not in control. I laugh about it and I, I make joke about it, make fun about it. But what, what else can you do? I mean, I, I see people getting angry and upset and just frustrated. <laughs> Listen, the game's over. Have a good laugh about it. Call it, call it out for what it was. But just have a laugh about it. It's not the end of the world. Oh, it's a hobby. The day you start getting upset about it, find a new hobby, is what I'd say. You know? And if you can't be objective, if you can't be objective about your own team, I mean... Are you at the stage, Ken? Are you at the stage? Ken, are you at the stage? Well, you're not obviously at the stage, um, but I was when Roy Hodgson was at the club. I just didn't even know when we were playing next. I didn't watch anymore. Obviously, you're not I, at that I, stage no, yet, no, I'm, but... a, I, I, I'm just. I'd be. I'd be first man to turn on the TV. I'd be the first guy in the live chat. I'd be. I. I, I love it. I, and I predict every game that we're going to win because that's what I want to happen, and that's you know that's 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 what supporters want to happen for their club. Uh, I still want Ollie to win every single game, but look, listen, wanting it and, and it being a reality are two completely different things. We need a new manager, we need a new style, we need a new, we need someone, you know, as the man said, a man with a plan. Um, two, and, two questions, two questions, Ken. Yeah. When do you think, when do you think, because it's going to be sooner rather than later, when do you think they'll pull the trigger? And number two... Depends, depends who, on what happens at the weekend. And number two... Who do you think it is and who do the fans want? Okay. Uh, who do I think it'll be? I think it'll be Pochettino. He wouldn't be my okay. first choice necessarily. Um, but I think he's a, I think he's a, he's a, he's, he's potentially a good fit. Um, Why would he be your first choice? Is he a massive improvement? Huh? Why wouldn't he be your first choice and who would be your first choice? Allegri would probably be my first choice. Um, because, because I think he's more experienced at a, at a top top end club. I think right. he's a proven winner. Um, right. I think he's, you know, there, there's less question marks over him in some in one sense. But then again, moving to the Premier League, it's like playing a different sport, and it's not not as easy to adapt. Some Pochettino has that um, experience and. He did a, a relatively good job at Spurs for for a reasonable period of time, um, and even even not winning anything, I would enjoy watching Manchester United if they played with the same uh, enthusiasm and technique as Spurs were playing with, uh, because they were an attacking team. They were always on the front foot. Um, you know, they they never reached the heights that that maybe they could have. And that's the question mark about Pochettino. But, you know, I think at Spurs, he really only had, uh, you know, a first 11. And after that, they were, which was very heavily reliant on Kane. And he lost him for big periods, uh, you know, which which 
things could have been different if he hadn't. So, you know, either one of them. Um, I see people talking about Nagel's man and, you know, some other tulip from Germany or whatever. I don't <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. Rose, Rose, whatever. Um, Rose, yeah. Look, yeah. I'd be... Yeah. yeah, Marco Rose, that's the one. Um, like, Shabby did a very good, good post the other day. Um, you know, I started reading it on Monday morning. I finished on Tuesday night. <laughs> <and> it, <laughs> it was, freedom, mate. <laughs> it was, it was uh, but no, seriously, it's and Shabby. To be fair, he does read up on all this stuff, and he, he does have a he does have a keen knowledge in 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 looking at looking at different coaches and stuff. But he, and and styles of play, it's something that interests him. But it's um for me, it's. Your manager has got to have a bit of charisma, a presence. And when he walks into the room, people shut up, people sit down, people want to listen. Uh, I think when Ollie walks into the room, everyone turns around and laughs at each other and sniggering behind his back. <laughs> That's the way I feel. That's the way I feel it would be in the Manchester United changing room, walking out, walking down the tunnel, and Pogba saying to the other fellow, Would you hear that tulip? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he thinks I'm going to do that. He can go and shite. So that's that's exactly what I think the United dressing room is like at the moment. I think if a new manager, Pochettino, would improve things drastically on the pitch. All I want as a United supporter at the moment is to enjoy watching them again. This Manchester United manager, at the way he has this team playing, they don't represent me as a Manchester United supporter. I think I've had pride in the team maybe five times since Solskjaer took over. I personally feel that the Poch deal is already done. I think it's. A, I think it will be this uh, within a week no. he goes. I think it's that close. It's not done. I think it's... Uh, I, I, but that's just a hunch. I, I have no idea. I, I, no I lost you there. Where did I do you? I don't know. You were, we think you threw the mic down, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. It was one of those mic drop moments, did you? But honestly, did you think you'd you get carried away and think, yes? <laughs> but that's how I feel at the moment. That is how I feel at the moment. This team don't represent me. And they don't represent the general oh. Manchester United supporter. <laughs> Sorry. Arsenal Malta's on. Arsenal are 1-1. They only equalised in the dying seconds to an own goal by Mulder. Obviously, they're missing uh. Ole. But yeah, yeah, well, anyway, I'm fairness. Molde have a nice just missed from inside the six yard box. Just put it over empty goal, empty net. Well, Molde Mo- 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 have improved that. significantly since Solskjaer left, right? Um, <laughs> and, and that's a fact. They're, they're doing much better since oh. Solskjaer left. Oh, I think so, uh, do they we don't represent the... me. Simple as that. And they don't represent the average Manchester United supporter. Ollie doesn't represent us. Mm. He's he's he he has he's just lost the plot and he's lost everything about what makes Manchester United great for me. He's destroying. That's that's my okay. that's my view. One question. And I One take anybody, question. so I'm not fussed who it is. Tony Pulis yeah, would yeah. do a better job. Sam Allardyce would do a better mate. job. <laughs> no, I said no, anybody who can do the job. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, Tony <laughs> Pulis would do a better job. And if someone said to me in the morning, if someone said to me in the morning, you can have Tony Pulis instead of Solskjaer, I'd bite their hand off. This fella, is a, he's ruining the football club. He's ruining the team. By, Manchester United by, have a better squad, in my opinion, in terms of depth, than most, than, than anybody else really at the moment, in terms of pure depth. They have a fantastic squad. The best squad they've had for seven or eight years since Ferguson left. Definitely the best squad in terms of depth. And they are, they're just not playing for them. Do you think by this time next week, Ken, uh, Manchester United will be without Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? If they don't win, on the, uh, if they don't win against Everton, I think he's gone. A draw is no good. Billy, same question. I- I think uh, he's on very dodgy ground. I don't. I personally don't think he'll go at the weekend, even if they do get beat. No. I think. I think they're going to give him a little bit more time. I don't think they should, but I think they will. Tristan, uh, same question. I think he'll be fine for a while, yeah. Unless they get, well. you know, unless they go on a run of defeats, 
then like obviously they'll get rid of him. But I don't think one more loss is enough. I think you he's know? done by next week. I really do. I think well, he should, he should, he should never have been appointed in the first place. So you know. Yeah, but yeah, but they've lost half their games this season. So that means if they lose on Sunday or Saturday, if they lose, that means they'll have lost more than half their games. I think it'll be re-examined during the international break. <laughs> when is that? I thought that, I thought this was the last game before the international break. Oh, is it? I thought there was another set. Oh, no, like... this is the last one. No. This is the oh, last one. Okay. Sorry, my fault. Week. Then I thought there was one more lot. I and that's why I'm thinking beat. if it doesn't go well uh, on Saturday, it's it's a good time to, to, to look at it then. In that case, I didn't realize. Yeah. I thought there was one more set, and I'm thinking that because they'll definitely look at it then. They'll re-examine yeah, their yeah, options, I think, but it, I mean, who is the uh, options unless Allegri or Pochettino is going to come in? Who's going to? Who are they going to get? Not being funny. I don't think listen, the club I mean, have played, Chris, paid plenty Chris, of money. Listen, I yeah, don't. I, there is absolutely zero managers in the Dutch, the French, the even even the Premiership. But very very few the managers. Thing. Well, not but Ken, these are two Manchester these United. are two managers that you've looked at previously, so they're not a step down in your yeah, in your in your wish list anyway. You say so, that, Ken, and I would agree with your normal thing, you know, normal circumstances. I'd say anyone would jump at the chance to take a Man United job, but the way it is at the moment is what I'm saying. I mean, there's not going to be many that are going to be too key. You know, it's not a it's not a job. Yeah, but you it's go ten, in it's, uh, it's ten million a year in a pandemic. Why are you going to turn it's, that down? You know, it's not the money. You know, it's it's it's, it's, it's Man United. Yeah. Most most managers yeah. would want to go to Man United. They would in normal circumstances. circumstances. Not, not come to the money. It's a career killer now. It's not, not a it's not you a don't turn down no way. Manchester United. No way. No, way. You, no one turns down really Man United. Right. Well, Klopp did. No. And so he was never offered the Man United job. He was never offered the Man United job. Okay. They spoke to him, but they were never. He was never offered the job. I also Next. spoke to half a dozen other people. Listen, it is. No, they did offer Klopp the job because they didn't his wife offer him said the we're job. not going to. No, they no, no. They did not offer him the job. They did. They did. They did. They did. No, they didn't. He, they didn't. They, uh, they offered him the job, and his wife said she doesn't want him to go to United. No, they didn't offer him the job. He said I'm it sorry, in his book. They didn't. They didn't offer Brad him the job. Augustine said they offered him the job. The German um, uh, journalist that wrote his autobiography, and his wife turned him down. They didn't offer him the job. <laughs> That's all they said. We can't, we yeah, can't we'll go on. Let's move on. There's no point arguing. Yeah, about let's it. move on. <laughs> okay. But what I'm saying is, it's not a career killer to say to go to Man United. It can't be. How can no. Man United be a career Listen, killer? I, I had this argument with Chappie, who, who swears to me that nobody can do a better job than Solskjaer and the club. <laughs> I, I, no, no, honest to God. Honest to God. This is honest to God true. That nobody can do a better job than Klopp, <coughs> or sorry, than, than Ali, and that Klopp and Pep would also fail miserably. What a load of okay. nonsense! Let me let me let me examine this career killer statement, right? So, if you get the job at Man United, you're obviously an a, an elite level coach because they because uh, they well, no, generally they picked David Moyes. They picked Moyes, okay. But what I'm what saying, I'm saying is, is I'm unless not... they've already got. A, you know, if I'm talking about like if you're someone like Ralph Hasenhutl, if you're taking right. on a job like that, unless you go in there and you succeed, which you know it's important, it, you, you're only going to be better than Ole. You're going to be better than Ole. Let's be honest, nobody's going to be. Ralph better. will get a job. But Ralph goes. In, Ralph goes into Man United. Win the league. But I'm gonna... I hear you. Why not? Ralph why not? Why not? Why not? Ralph goes. One minute. The point is Ralph. Ralph. Ralph Hasenthal goes into Man United, okay, doesn't win him the league. That's not going to kill his career. He'll still get a job somewhere else, a decent job somewhere else. Yeah, but he's it got does to re- not he's kill got to rebuild his, his reputation. When you get, I mean, you look at Moyes when he went to Man United. But maybe he, he does reputation. win them the league. Maybe he does win them the league. I just uh, Man United are one of the the support is uh, there for a coach to win the league. They they might win. Cups, yeah, fine. That's what they. That's all that. That's what they're turned into because of the way they're built now. 
Yeah. Can I put a mic to Dennis with it here? Of course, Billy. You know, Man United, right, are uh, massive, massive oh, club. Yeah. The biggest but, club in the world, it, probably. Yeah, but yeah. do you know the way they run, besides the manager, upstairs, not having a director of football? Yeah. Exactly. The transfers not being made by the manager. Do you think anyone's going to have a chance unless that changes? No, that's that's my point, Bill. That's why I'm saying it's a difficult no, situation I... and they need to fix that to get the right man in. Because people like Pochettino, they want football men to work with. Yeah. And they're not going to get it. And that's my point. You know, if you bring in... You look at... Um, Nagelsmann, for instance, he has this huge staff of people and, like, you know, he has people to look at the, you know, all this statistical analysis and all that that United just simply don't want to do. I think you've got to get rid of all the, the hangers on, the, the palisters, all them. If a manager comes in, he's got to get rid of all them and, new room and, and get rid of the lot, all these jobs for the boys, feel it, and all. get rid of them and start a new and, and yeah, put a director of football in and yeah. get on the right well, foot. You're not, you're not going to get a director of football in in the, in the, in the short term. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen in, in the yeah. immediate term. However, if, for example, and I'm only picking his name, uh, and I said he, he not necessarily someone I'd be jumping up and down for, is Pochettino. Well, Pochettino comes in, he brings in his backroom staff with him. If they went on and won seven, eight, nine games, whatever the, the, the thing, and the whole atmosphere of the club changes, and all of a sudden you're winning games, absolutely he can win a league. Absolutely. You don't need a director of football to win a league. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but like I just, right, think, the others are too, yeah. I just think the problem is there's too many teams that are better set up to win it that'll call, that'll stop them. No, that, but but that that that's okay. I mean, listen, three years ago Manchester United, what? There's been two seasons now. Liverpool were second and first. The season before that, they finished 19 points behind United. So don't tell me it can't be done. All of a sudden, yeah, but they you changed get a the setup. Was set up to win a league, same as Pe you know, like Man City built the setup for Pep Guardiola. <laughs> Liverpool have built their setup for Klopp. You don't need a You're director of football to win Man a United. league. That's my point. You don't, you so don't they, need a director of football to win a league. No, it's not talking about director. You need a good coach. I'm talking about if Manchester setup. United didn't make another signing for five years, there's enough good players there to win the league. All they need to do is have a proper coach. Yeah, I, I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. I disagree. Yeah. Well, I can, I can have that. I don't think you've got. If you didn't go, if you went five years without buying a player, there's no way you'd. Win, you know, no matter what coach you had in there, there's no way they're going to win it. Why not? Because you simply, you, you've got a Why good not? team, but it's not good enough. It's not coached properly. Are you telling me Klopp couldn't go in to Man United and win a league in a couple of years without signing the player? Without signing no, the player, no. No, because he's you down and he's not going to go back to you. <laughs> no, I'm just... No, no, listen, you see, it's hard to have a... Uh, it's... <laughs> I'm just but kidding. Was, like, Pep, if Pep went to United within two years, he'd win the league without signing the player. The same as Liverpool the same and Man City would be, would be improving. Or, you know, there'd be other... There's, there's, see, that's what I'm saying. If you just... You're looking at it... Again, it's the same thing with, like, the pick in the players. It's just... It's not an isolated thing. Man United are good enough if they had the right coach now, but in five years' time, you don't buy a player, you're not. Okay, listen. Jurgen Klopp goes in there. Pep Guardiola goes in there. Allegri goes in there. Nagelsmann goes in there. Who at the top elite uh, 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 managers go in there? They will get that Manchester United side certainly in the top four the following season as challengers for the league. There is no, a, no. An, an, an abundant of talent there. Man United buy play yeah. every every. Every transfer market, they buy uh, uh, very, very good players. 
It just needs coaching. So from not coming yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. They've they got to tweak though. They've got to tweak Abed. What they, what they need is uh, they need uh, a left back for me. They need a left back and they need another centre half. But Billy, and I so, agree. With, they I, you know, buy the right let, players without uh, Billy, the right setup. Billy, 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 I agree with what you're saying. But look at Leicester. They didn't have great players in every position. For fuck's sake. Yeah, Jesus yeah, they Christ. didn't have they you you play with if you have plays with heart, desire, confidence and respect, that's how Less you win games. When they're system. playing for each other. Sorry? That's a good point, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, they buy good players, but they're what? buying the wrong players half the time. They're not buying the Tristan, right players they yeah, no, 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 goes into no, that Tristan, football club. The right player has been wrongly coached. Jurgen Klopp like, goes into sure. that football. Like yeah, who? Yeah. Luke Shaw. But they well, bought they... their tellers, haven't they? They bought tellers. Yeah. You, Jurgen yeah. Klopp goes into that football club. They're champions in two years. We guarantee. Without a shadow of a doubt. Within, oh. they, they've got cracking players. I mean, they've got two players for every good players for every position. They've just got are an idiot as a me, manager. Are you telling me that Pogba wouldn't look better than Henderson if he was under Klopp? Because he'd have all of, he'd have all of, he would have all of Henderson's you know, heart and spirit drilled into him, and then he'd have the popular ability. He would have no, these players playing no. fantastically well. I couldn't agree with that, but what I agree with is that you guys would be, we're under Klopp, Pep maybe, you'd be champions. No. That, 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 maybe, but no. no. Sorry, I'm not having it that it's that much of a difference. No, I, well, to be honest with you, you don't we take well Klopp, to if you do take that. Klopp out of Liverpool, you take Klopp mm -hmm. out of Liverpool, that team is struggling to get into the top four. No. no. Yes. 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 Not for me. No. no. Yes. No. Absolutely. They've got so many good players. But, but why are they good players? Yeah, because the coach right and the set up right, and I agree with that part. They're also recruited but, well. But they're all, yeah. got, all good players that he's got. And I'll Listen, the is Wijnaldum a better player than Pogba? Team. You take is Wijnaldum a better footballer than Pogba? He's more effective than Pogba. Yeah. Why? Why? He's not lazy. Because, because he's coached the right way. No, because he was. he's more effective because he works harder and does what he should be doing. No. He doesn't Correct, do because around. he's doing it, because that's the way his coach and his coach no, makes him do it. that's the way Pogba is. That's the way he's always been, and that was always the argument with him when he was in the youth team as well, that he constantly just wants to be, he wants to do highlight reel moments. That's the way he plays the Juventus. That's the way he is. I've, I've got to say, I'm with Trish on that. I don't think you can uh, get Pogba to play the way you want him, because Paul Pogba is Paul Pogba. Yeah. I think it's a personality flaw with him. I think he's a very talented guy, but he's got a personality flaw. He, he does what Paul Pogba wants to do. be the main man without putting in the effort. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And that's why I, I don't think that he fits Man United as well as what you'd think it, a player of his ability would. He should never have been brought back to the club. No, I agree with that. Uh, uh, should we uh, should we get on with the, the next game? <laughs> Let's do. Uh, on. I think we'll finish that one there. Let's do Spurs two, Brighton one. Um, who watched that game? I didn't watch much football. I this watched weekend. it. I'm not I gonna lie it. to you. I watched it. Yeah. Um, Kane bought a. <laughs> do you know what I mean? An awful penalty again. <laughs> yeah, I saw that penalty decision. What's your What's your uh, opinions on that, guys? I played centre forward. He's been really clever. You can buy fouls like that all day, all over the pitch as a centre forward, if you're clever about it. Um, he was actually the one fouling. Yep. That's it's 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 just it's just uh, referees. Ted you can't like, honestly. Superb at that. Referees are like I don't know something like auditors or something like uh, you know the people that no one talks to in school. Right? It's or they're the last people. people. <laughs> they were the last people. They were the last people to be picked for PE. Picked on the team, yeah. Yeah, because they were so crap, right? And they never played the game. They, they don't know how to play the game, and you can con them so easily. It's just really poor refereeing. Really poor refereeing. I don't have any understanding. You're right on that. 
and they just they don't know how to play the game and I'm all I, I, you know you know this debate that rages every every so often should ex players be referees and all that 100%. sort of stuff well well yeah one hundred percent if they didn't earn like a hundred grand a week you know um, players, but, but the lower league players potentially could be um but I, I I'd be a big fan of that but then again all the the do gooders and all the politically correct people and all that sort of stuff you know lower. <laughs> Even if you watch a lower league match on the telly, it's refed one hundred percent differently than a Premiership match. It's doesn't. It's like they're different rules. Mm. You know, they're, really you're allowed to tackle. You're allowed to really What's your player. opinion on the penalty? Sorry, Ted, yeah. I didn't mean to. Well, when I first saw, saw it, I thought it was outside the box for a start, and I didn't think it was a penalty. I thought it was a very soft penalty to be given. I don't think anyone on the pitch thought it was a penalty. I and, think Kane made the foul, so I don't see and, how it can possibly be a... I know, but he didn't really appeal for the penalty, you know. I, I, it just baffled me. I thought he, Kane made the most of it. I don't think he, like, rolled all over the place, but he did make the most of it. And he was the one doing the foul, so it shouldn't have been a penalty, as simple as that. I mean, Kane, is getting, the, Kane is getting the Brian Robson, Alan Shearer, or Steven Gerrard treatment. He's England captain. Yeah. He can say what he wants on the pitch to a referee or an opponent. He can kick. He can Stamp foul. He can dive. He Stamp can do whatever he likes. He's going off the pitch. Yeah. Shearer, Shearer did it for years. Yeah. Gerard did it for years. They're getting away with murder. Brian Robson did it for years. Getting away with murder. You, you just... England captain really has carte blanche to do what he likes. <laughs> He's protected, isn't he? Yeah, you're right. Um, Spurs bubbling away nicely. Yeah, delighted for Jose. Absolutely delighted for him. Are they, play, and, are they playing that well, though, when you watch them? Do you think they're a good side to watch? Or do you think they're just... Tell me a Jose side of Wars. Yeah. Tell me a Jose side of Wars, but tell me a Jose yeah. side of Wars. Yeah, I know, nothing. but I'm just saying, they don't look like us. You just watch them and you think, they're very what? beatable, which is unusual for a Jose side. Normally, you get they get a goal and they shut up shop and nobody gets near them and you think, well, it's game over once they've scored. But you watch them and they look very I think beautiful. they've got a few bad players, you know. Mm. Yeah, I don't like that whole bag who they bought from Southampton. I'm Not glad Everton never got him. He, he's awful. And the Doherty, the yeah, fullback. He doesn't back, shoot them, does he? He don't, just doesn't shoot them at all. No, no. He's, he's been taking advantage of the bit, craziness no. of the rest of the results, I think, rather than playing well. They're just taking advantage of, like, the, the craziness. Well, they're the only one point results. less than Liverpool, so they're not doing that bad. No, but... It's, it's, <laughs> well, no, it's true. No, it's Honestly, they're, mean, not, they're, not doing, they're not doing that bad. They're, yeah. they're, 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 they're boring, Jose, like, team who who be more destructive than constructive. And, but I'm delighted for him. I'm absolutely delighted for him. And to be honest with you, I, I really hope he does well at Spurs. Do I you? really do. Yeah, yeah, I do. I like, I never wanted him to come to Manchester United. I was never a supporter. Uh, but when he was there, he wanted to make some really good calls, in my opinion, with the squad. And he wasn't backed. He wasn't allowed to sell Pogba. He wasn't allowed to sell Martial. Yeah. And he needed to do that. Yeah, I don't care who he wanted to sign. He needed to do that to clear them out of his dressing room. He wasn't allowed. And the day the transfer window shut, on the, on the day of his third season, you know, the, the end of August, he, sh he should have just walked away from the club because the club backed the players over, over the manager. I love um, that, yeah. I love that. Once, once you do that, your job is dead. And the only thing I do admire about him is that he hung in there and stung them for 15 million. Because yeah, he was that's why he like, waited, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'm so he bloody well. Why should he? Yeah, why should absolutely. he walk away for 15 million quid? I know he's a multi-millionaire, but... No, listen. I wouldn't, walk, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't walk past a, a, a euro if I saw it on the street. And I'm not stuck for a euro. So, it, it, like, no, absolutely. Like it'd be absolutely bloody useless to me. 
My mate left me a bag when he went back, a bag full of euros, right? He said, I've got these, can you, t you know, see if you can change them or so. I said, y you know, because he's, like, left some stuff for you, like. He said, you can have it if you want, like. He's gone back to, he's said, if you can get it changed, like. Or, you know, I said, no, I'll, I'll get it changed and I'll send it on to you in Egypt so you, and, you know, do family, because there's, like, 200 euros in there or something. This huge bag of them. So I took them around all the money changes and that. Not one of them would touch them because they're coins. Yeah, no, I I lost interest when you said your mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I just think I think Jose was was badly treated at United, and there's a lot of people who've been badly treated at United over the last few years, in my opinion. And you know, it, it's there, that stems from the top, and uh, so I'd really like to see him do well. Um, I'm just said, just wanted to go back to that. That was my point about why I don't think you'd win the league no matter who you brought in because the the, the people at the top aren't changing and they're going to badly treat whoever comes in. They're going to mess them around and they're not going to get what they want. So that's what I'm saying. To be honest with you, job. we're in a place now, in my opinion, that if the right manager comes in, you can be very competitive with that team without anything being asked for. Yeah, competitive, I'd agree with. I just don't think it's enough. You get the right manager come in, you'll be second at the very least. Yep. With the right manager, with an elite level manager, you, you yep. can go second at least within a run at of least. games. Yeah. And, and by the time, let's say in 18 months' time, that they are in a position to compete, Liverpool could very well be on the way down. Salah's coming to. 30, Mana's coming to 30 at that stage, or Mane. So well. Yeah, so all of a sudden, yeah, then it, it's, it's saying, a completely different dynamic. But people who tell me, ah, you're out of it for five years, I'm like, a United Sports said, oh, we shouldn't do change anything because nothing can change. Locks to that. Lots can change. And you know what? Make a decision. I'd be rather make a mistake than make no decision at all. I never, I, I never take heed badly. of people. I never take heed of people that say, "Oh, uh, this side's going to dominate for the next five, ten no, years." I, that I, is just so many variables and but you, I'm just parts saying, that. you look at United. There's a lot of players in this squad. I mean, players like Dan James and that that simply aren't good enough. But they, like, really, they don't need to be there. If you look at the moment, he's playing two up top, right? Two up top. That's the preferred formation, whether it's 3-5-2 or 4-4-2, diamond. Two up top is his preferred formation at the moment, right? I can understand why. Because he's no wingers and he's got four center forwards, right? So why play wide if you have no wide players? So as the four up front that he is a choice of from the moment, Martial, who I know you like, Tristan. I think he's a donkey. Um, Martial... Greenwood, Rashford, and Cavani. That is got, uh, any two from that four is 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 really good forward line. Yeah, I, I wouldn't argue with that. Tottenham don't have that cover up top. Liverpool don't have that cover up top. Arsenal don't have that cover up top. Tottenham don't have that cover up top. They may have a better yeah. starting eleven, but none of them have that depth. None of them. And you have that Torre and Palistri to come in January as well. So there's there's lots of talent in that squad. And given the right manager, you get the right manager now. By the end of the season, you'll be competing. And next season, it's just going to be... Uh, it'll be a new horizon. I just don't understand people that are just... Yeah. It, 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 it's crazy <laughs> to me. It baffles me that people are just writing United off uh, for the, the next few The problem is the people at the top will interfere again with the transfers. And it'll cause a mess again. No, That's but what, the well, if they is. get po Pochettino won't. Me Pochettino will not. Um, he's used to that. He's need to having the, the top brass. Uh, uh, yeah, he had the same problem the with Spurs. That's why that was his yeah. excuse for not winning anything there. Listen, lots of excuses. If you if he went on a roll and everything's going rosy, and he wants X player, and and are firing and are in a position to compete, he'll get X player. Simple as that. If he only needs right. one, they will bust their ass to get it from. There's not much needed there apart from a decent set of coaches. 
and they can improve United considerably with a decent set of coaches. And as a fan, all I want is to be proud of the team and to enjoy watching them and what they produce. Yeah, I love that kid. Right. Fulham 2, West Brom nil. Yeah, I watched this one, you know. And, uh, oh, me. Well, I was, well, was, 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 was that your penance? <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting West Brom. I, I actually forecast West Brom would win that because Fulham being so bad. But West Brom were abysmal. You've got nothing that you can say is going to score them goals. No. They didn't turn up at all, did they? No, they were awful. <clears throat> and Fulham, to be, to be fair to Fulham, they played quite good football, a bit negative at times. But, you know, they deserve to win and they impressed me more than I've seen them this year. Is that two relegation teams playing it out, Definitely. do you think? Definitely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, yeah. I think we yeah. all think that, don't we? It's, it's who's the, who's the third yeah. team is really the, the question. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's uh, let's move on to Leeds one, Leicester four. Brendan Twenty minute Rogers warning from me, guys. Okay. Cool. All right, guys. Yeah. So let's just uh, let's talk about that. Leeds one, Leicester four. Very good Jamie Vardy and Leeds crap defence. I think that sums up the whole thing. Leeds, yeah. Leeds have a have a really poor defence, a really poor defence. Um, and uh, being honest with you, I have been less than impressed with Leeds. And Basilia, who's a guy who I rate really highly and like a lot, but I I have been I haven't been impressed with Leeds at all all season. I know they had a, one or two results early doors, but their football isn't great, and the style isn't brilliant because they're they're just the players aren't quite at that Premiership level, in my opinion. And they were really poor defence. I would be a little worried that Leeds could get sucked in to a bottom six relegation dogfight. I can't um, see that. Ken. I can't see that. I think the. Uh... I think they play decent football. I think that it's att an attacking side, they're good to watch. Yet the, the defence is less than good. But as an attacking side, which he proved, he will score goals. And that's what the others haven't got. And they've got, so, they've they've got, got a lot of players like out as well. They've got a fair few players out to come back in yeah. and make a difference. I mean, that Laurenti hasn't even played for them yet. No, no. no. All right, okay. So they have players come in. I, yeah, I just they, remember I, they're missing. I watched captain. them a lot last year. I Helping just watched them a lot no, last not a captain, year. Sorry. I think they're missing a bit of Aileen. No, not Aileen. No, I was thinking of Calvin Phillips. Their captain's Cooper, 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 Cooper. But yeah. I think he played. I was going to say their captain, um, Phillips. <laughs> yeah, but I think yeah, yeah. Cooper played, didn't he? That was when he was back. Yeah. They've been missing him for a while, though. Um, yeah, I think. It's Phillips has been out for a he's out for a while. They miss him because he was there. The you know the play all went through him. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it'll be it if they start dropping. It'll be hard to turn it around again. And, and they got a small opinion. squad as well, so they could easily suffer with yeah. injuries or, but you know people COVID. get positive tests. They're, yeah, they're, they could end up in serious trouble. Yeah, because that Rodrigo's testing positive, hasn't he? Yeah, he's so, okay. that's yeah. why he was missing. Yeah, yeah I just, to, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not as convinced as I was watching them last season. That's all. It's 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 a big. Step, I'm not. Isn't it? It's a huge step, and they they got that good start, which which is essential for any team to come up. I'm not saying they'll be relegated. I don't. I I, I don't think they will be relegated, but I I just see them. Dropping down into that bottom mm. six, and and serious serious investment is needed there. What, um, yeah. What would yeah. worry me is if Bamford turns out to be another Pookie and only scores, and he's now he's he's had his run of goals <laughs> and stops scoring. Yeah. If he doesn't maintain, doesn't keep scoring for them. If he goes back to his usual and misses yeah. twenty five chances a game rather than scoring. They're in trouble because they need because they haven't got anyone yeah. else really to score. As Billy said, and he's bang on. They have goals in their team at the moment, 
which is separating them from the rest mm. of the, the, the also rounds. Yeah. If those goals dry up, Tristan, you're right. And I, I, I just not a hundred percent of this. And look, they've done really well. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. They, 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 had a, they had a decent start, but I'm just not convinced yet. They, they have a bit more to convince me. The thing with them is the quality of their players is very. I mean, even when when Bielsa took over, that was a team that was at best you'd expect mid-table championship team. At best, yeah. you know, you were, they were expected to struggle. Bielsa's turned them, them players, still the same level of players, but he's turned them into a team that's won promotion, you know, in two years, and then. And then the, you know he's trying there, and he's only got he's only made small changes, and he's trying to take them to stay in the Premier League. That's a big job, you know. It doesn't, matter, job. it doesn't matter how good a manager he is. That's a big job to do. Huge job, yeah. and and he's doing it. He's doing it. He's doing it really well up to up to now. I just think they are beginning to to hit that wall where investments required. That yeah. the players are just struggling a wee bit, I think. But it's. It's not relegation material for me. Yeah, maybe players like Let's Lorente see. and Rodrigo getting reg- you know, getting settled in and playing what playing for them could change it, so Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. And talking of Leicester, they've done very well, haven't they? You know, I know uh, some aren't fans of Rogers, but they're doing really well and they're playing some good stuff as well. So all power to them. You know, they went to Leeds and they absolutely battered Leeds. And they've done well all season. And they're a team I like to watch, actually. I like to watch them. Big time. Brendan Rodgers is one of the best coaches. Brendan Rodgers is one of the best coaches in the Premier League. Anybody who says otherwise is talking folly. Yeah. That's what I said. He is a top top I know you do, Chris. I know you do. He's a top 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 He needs somebody else to help him tactically. Because the only yeah. one he's done well tactically, you know, where he's had to win a tactical battle was Man City. And let's face it, that wasn't a difficult tactical decision he made. It's not like no, he's no, gone and no. done something special to win, you know. Ta- so uh, he does still need that help in that aspect of the game. But apart from that, if he gets that, there's nothing stopping them being a competitive top, you know, team to challenge Absolutely. for the title. Because they've got fantastic... Re- um, Recruitment system, they've got money. There's nothing to stop them being competitive at the top end every season, really. But would he bring yeah. in that coach to help him, Tristan? Uh, it's hard to tell because I don't know if he, if he actually realises that it's a problem. Because he does well enough without one. I don't know if he realises that to make that next step, he needs someone with that little bit of knowledge he doesn't Acumen. have. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think he's a uh, think he's a top coach again. He's a, and he's another fellow who I like to see doing well because his teams play in the right way. They play oh. pro- progressive football. They, Would they you have him at United, uh, uh, Ken? A bit like Tristan says, I, I I take him at United as a, as as first team coach all day long, but I think he'd need someone yeah. alongside him. Yeah, you know. The, the other thing, he's not organised the defence either, can he? His teams are yeah, very vulnerable at the back, considering yeah. they've got um and sat in front of them usually. They can be... Yeah, he hasn't played much this season. He's hardly kicked the ball. Yeah, and uh, what he did, he was playing in defence for the first few games. He got injured. Because they're missing so many players, they brought in. They had to bring in defenders. Yeah, and and Chilwell's on. Chilwell's a massive loss. Like, he's a he's so? a player I really he, like. He, yeah, he was, but he was really causing like. problems there, and they needed rid of him. I think he. It, I think it's actually helped them get rid of him. The problem was replacing him was the issue, rather than him going is the issue. If you see what I mean? Yeah, I was hoping they'd buy Shaw, but they didn't. Um, <laughs> But, uh, no, like I, I said, honestly, they've got a good recruitment system. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I know. I listen. Leicester are a club. You, you that sort of everyone sort of likes. Really, no one dislikes Leicester. I don't think a great deal unless you're from one of their dark Yeah, <laughs> like uh, Leicester are sort of a they're good. They're a good club. I, I I'm glad for them. I I like seeing them yeah. do well. I, I I for one didn't think they'd do well this season because I thought Bardi's goals might dry up. And yeah, a bit that's like true. you did say that, didn't you? I yeah, 
a bit like a bit like um, Leeds. <laughs> they don't really have anyone else scoring every week, you know. Um, I, I'd be worried if Vardy got injured or is out. But what a what a night! Nice, what a what a player he is! I, I just love him. Point when he was out for a few games, didn't they? He was they struggled yeah. badly. Yeah, that yeah. Was, they he hit looked, their he, bad spell, wasn't it? The team is made for him. The team, yeah. the setup was all about him, and it was when they won the league as well. He ju- just, uh, ju- I just love seeing him do well. He's, he's, he's the sort of, he's, you know that 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 saying, the girl next door. He's like the bloke next door playing professional football, isn't he? He's, he's just, yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, you can see him drinking his can of Red Bull and smoking his fag on the way in the in the gate. You know, he's a he's he's a funny fish. He's was he's a throwback. Or something he drank at no port, wasn't it? He's a he's a throwback to the eighties and nineties yeah. type player that that I grew up watching, and that's why I like him. And he works. Out, if he was, um, he's a bit. He's a bit too. He goes down too easy. We know that he's in, but he'll get away with it because he's English. He, and he does tend to throw himself into challenges that he probably shouldn't be going into. Some of them are quite nasty at times. He can be nasty. But yeah, good for him. But good he for works him. his bloody socks off, and you can't. Yeah. Uh, you can't. Uh, to be fair, if my uh, centre forward, if my centre forward isn't thrown in nasty challenges, I take him into the dressing room and I bait seven shades of shite out of him as well. <laughs> because centre forwards have got to be in there throwing nasty challenges. They've got to leave their foot in on the keeper. They've got to make sure the keeper doesn't come for the next cross. They've got to make sure that the centre half isn't cro- clearing the ball without any pressure. Give him a good second kick early on. And say next time, next time you do that, I'm going to be here again. And the next time I'll be here again. But you know, and, you, and, and Vardy's Vardy. doing it at 33 as well. That's some love doing. him. Love him. Yeah. Ozzy needs well, a new body to be grand. Yeah, yeah. we have to get on. Move on. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's get on to some talking points. Um, uh, let's start with uh, uh, yeah. I, I think it's long overdue with Marcus Rashford and his uh, humanitarian deeds. So, someone want to take that away or chip in or? Do we just all clap or? Yeah, yeah. I think we should all stand up. I yeah, stand up. Just, I mean, what can you... he may not be able to get it at Lamfield at the moment, but I'm happy to provide it for now. Can I can I just say because uh, I have spoken negatively about about United, obviously. Uh, what? What a what a pleasure it is to have him representing the mm. club and representing us as fans. He's absolute gentleman. And to be honest with you, the funny thing is, even what he did for Martial against Red Bull Leipzig. Yeah. Yeah. He's He's on a hat trick. Bruno gives him the penalty, and he turns around to Martial, who hasn't scored in eleven games, and gives him the penalty. It's just a measure of the guy. He yeah. is a, he's a wonderful human being. What he's doing for the kids, and it may have started small and it's grown legs. And of course, you don't know how much he's doing, but if he's the face of it, it's. And I know he's out there feeding families yeah. at night because I've heard stories. Just what a role model for kids to look up to, for every football supporter to look up to. And I know that despite the rivalries and despite the crap that goes on in football and the tribalism between supporters, he get a standing ovation in every stadium in England. Because Absolutely. He's fighting, he's fighting for every child in the country. Who is in a position of no, you know, where they, they can't be fed or their parents are neglectful or whatever the case may be. And if I hear some twat going on, oh, don't give them vouchers because they spend it on booze and fags, is that the fucking child's fault? Oh, no. Don't, don't get me started on that one, Ken. I've heard that quite a few times. He, and I've, it, I've deleted he, so it, many posts like that because I just don't see that that's relevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. He is an absolute inspiration. He's the Bob Geld off of football, and I'm super proud of him. You You must be very proud of him at Man United, but it's what he's doing for football in general and footballers in general. It's got a good reputation back. You know, not not perfect, 
But people are starting to look at footballers as role models, and he's the biggest role model that you could ever have in football. I, I've been honest with you, I wouldn't care if he never scored another goal for Man United. The fella yeah. is a class act, and he he just is a class act for his his absolute selflessness in the way he's gone about this. He is not the most educated guy in the world either. Um, and had a very tough upbringing, mm. and it's it's just wonderful to see. It's it's wonderful to see. He honestly, he is the Bob Geldof of 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 soccer at the moment, and he's a Bob Geldof is someone in Ireland who we're we're super proud of as as a person as well. And it's it's it, it's just a pleasure to be to to have him playing for Manchester United and and for football in general. Billy, you're bang on. He's an inspirational character. Inspiration. Yeah, yeah, sure. And he didn't have to do what he did. You no. know, that's the, the crux of it. He doesn't have to do it. He does it because of his humanitarianism and his philanthropy and his good heart. And I mean, like you said, Ken, he feels these people. He feels these kids because he's been one of them. He's been in the situation. He's been brought, on, brought up on the streets. Yep. Same as I have, you know, and he knows what it feels to be hungry. He knows what it feels to have no dinner money, etc. So fair play to him. And during a pandemic as well, you know, it, it's 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 super, super it's massive. honourable. It's massive. And, I and mean, I just give him a knighthood. Also, give the guy a knighthood. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, I, what I would say is a huge amount of footballers do a huge amount of good work that's not publicised. And that yeah, really is what he said, yeah. right? Um, but I've never seen a footballer capture the attention of the nation, capture the attention of the government, capture the, captain, capture the attention of the captains of industry the way he has done. And he, the nation have taken him to their heart, uh, uh, and, and rightly so. I really... And, and to think the BBC are maybe not going to give him the BBC Sports Personality of what? the Year. They should be ashamed of themselves. That's all. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Who yeah. Could, who could they give it? To? I thought it was a vote anyway. It is a vote, but it, apparently he, his nomination was after the the the, the deadline. Uh, Fuck off! Yeah, I'm not just having that. The deadline, then. I mean, what's the point? Yeah, yeah. To yeah. Him. There's, no, there's not even a competition there. Just no. drop everybody else from the comp from the thing, then, and just say, no. But they probably give it to it's some Spanish sport. Who are you going to no give it to? Of, you know? Yeah, but there's been yeah. no sport. Who are you going to give it to anyway? Yeah, somebody from the curling team or something. Who wants yeah, to get something. yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor, poor old Andrew, who's been the captain of the Scottish tur- curling team for like <laughs> four yeah. years. Right. You need to give so it to him before he pops his clogs, you know. Well, I think he needs to get a knighthood before he gets the Sports Personality of the Year award. Um, yeah, he's a credit to football. He's a credit to to, to to Manchester United and his family. That's the most important Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Right, let's move on to uh, Bobby Charlton, uh, Nobby Styles. I'd like to say something about Bobby Charlton first. Please, uh, please, do, please, do, please do, Billy, because you remember uh, watching him play, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> massive fan of Bobby's, and uh, sad, very sad news to hear that he's got dementia. And um, been a great football man all of his life. And well, it's been coming out in the press now that the Astle family are trying to uh, put the issue about heading the ball in with dementia. And I don't think that works for me. You know, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, if you can get money from somewhere, great. But a million people have got dementia in Great Britain at the moment, and mm. you know they're not all, they're nothing to do with nothing to do with football. But years ago, obviously, I don't know if, uh, the age of some of the lads out there, but years ago when. Case balls were made of leather and they used to soak water up. It was like a medicine ball. It really was. Mm-hmm. And it had a length in it, you know, and the weight of the ball was uh, these days they're not the synthetic uh, and that doesn't lighter. make any difference because they travel faster. The actual damage done, the the power they're hitting you with is actually <laughs> higher now. 
because of the speed they're moving. I, I've, I've <laughs> It, so don't think it's less damaging. Oh, it's actually more I, damaging. I think it's less impact, isn't it? No, it's higher impact now because of the speed they move. Because of the velocity. The velocity, the velocity is much oh, higher than the... Because they were so heavy, they weren't... You know, you couldn't kick them as hard. And they weren't as round. You know, they weren't as streamlined. <laughs> so they didn't move as well through the air. So they is now, it, they move that... so fast. It actually does... It's, it's more... You know, a higher impact. Isn't that, the, isn't that the old story? Isn't that the old story when was it not Lofthouse was asked who is the better winger, Tom Finney or Sandy Matthews? And he what? said they were both absolutely terrific wingers. It was very hard to split them. He said Stanley Matthews was slightly, slightly ahead. And he was asked, well, well, why do you think Stanley was slightly ahead? And he said, but when he crosses the ball, he always made sure the laces were facing away from my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The two of them were that good that, that that's how they delivered the ball to him. But you're, you're right, Billy. I don't think there's any direct correlation. I, well, it's impossible to no, do that. I, I think, think so. They've I just don't launched think so. a new study. This is the 12, uh, 30 Premier, you know, ex Premier League players have signed up for it to study whether there is any correlation. So, you know, it, it's still in. It's still at the stage um, where we have no idea. But yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully they'll do some research yeah. and we can find out. His brother, yeah, Jack, yeah. Suffered, his brother yeah, Jack suffered yeah. from it as well, to be fair. Yeah. And it's, so yeah. I think that's more a hereditary issue in the family than, than it is to do with football. I think it's just coincidental. But, but it was Nobby, what uh, Nobby and, Styles as well. I mean, he like, barely and, had and, and Nobby, Nobby passing this, this week is, 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 is a, it's just a sad week for Manchester United. Uh, you know, we've we we've, we've lost a, a, a couple of the sixty eight team out this year. Um it's been you know, I'd like to tell you about Nobby. My dad was coaching me when I was sort of seven or eight and I, I was too too young. Uh Nobby was pretty much finished by the time I'd taken an interest in football. So it was about nineteen seventy five, seventy six and I I remember to this day my father, Lord of Mercy on him, who's passed away, was coaching me on how to tackle. And he was telling me about this fella, Nobby Styles. He said, you got to learn to tackle like Nobby Styles." He said, because Nobby had this great art of being able to get the man and the ball at the same time. He said, and that's what you got to be able to do. You got to be able to look after yourself on the pitch, get the ball and, and get the guy at the same time. And he says, and failing, failing that, he said, Nobby just did the man. <laughs> so uh, he said, yeah, yeah. he was... Nobby Styles and I posted it on the on the, the site. He was happy to be the unsung hero. He was happy to be the foil for the best, the laws, the Charlton's, the Bobby Moores and the English team and whoever else. He was happy to do the dirty work. He was happy to be the water carrier. He played the game with a smile on his face that Dwight York would have been proud of or Ronaldinho would have been proud of. Yeah, yeah. He always had a smile on his face, even when he was punching the head off you. He was a <laughs> lovely, lovely man, a super coach, a hugely respected figure at United. One of the main reasons that that class in 92 came through mm. the way they did. They were coached by Harrison and Nobby Styles. The guy was an absolute legend and happy to sit in the background and not be the man spoken about. And, and, what a super, super Manchester United legend. When they talk about club legends, he is right up there in the very highest echelon with Sir Bobby, who's who's obviously got dementia now, but Bobby survived that plane crash. He's had to carry that around with him, visions and mm. pulling his teammates yeah. out of seats. And honest to God, fellas, it makes me emotional even talking about what that man had to carry around with him for the rest of his life. Yet he won a European and, and, Cup with Manchester United. He won a World Cup with England. What a legend. Yeah, absolutely. And Ken, let's, let's just mention the class of the guy because he's been dignification personified for Man United for all these years as an ambassador for Man United and as a mm. dignitary. You know, it's, it's incredible. When, you, when I think of Bobby Charlton, I just think class act. Yeah, I think everybody does. And it's funny. He's chalk and cheese to his brother, Jack, you know, and Jack yeah. is another great favourite of mine of, because of what he did for Irish football. And, you know, he gave me some of the 
best days of my life as a as a, as a soccer supporter supporting Ireland. Um, it's really some of the best memories. A great time in your 20, 21, 22. So absolutely fantastic time. Traveled all over the world. And uh, Jack was the exact opposite to Bobby. He was bullish. He was... Uh, Jack the, the lad. Fight. He was Jack the he lad, was, and Bobby Charlton was more like dignified and classy, wasn't he? Like one coach. was a silk purse, one was a sow's ear, but they were great yeah. football <laughs> people. They were great football people, and and look, Bobby and his wife are still going to games. He's, he's still there, whether he's dementia or not. He, he was at yeah. games, earlier, you know, right up to when when they could be let in. He's a, and his his wife, and you know, just for what he did and. Surviving that plane crash, sticking with some mad, winning the World Cup. I think he was the. There's only two or three of that team were were made knights, um, and he was one of them. Um, and just an absolute Manchester United legend, director of the club. Just he he he's he's part of the fabric of Manchester United, and he's himself and Nobby were were two of the last guys really. Um, that that were, you know. They were Manchester United through and through, and it's very sad. But that's that's life, isn't it? It is, yeah, very much so. You know, and and Liverpool have their legends, and Everton will have their legends, and but but I think Bobby Bobby Charlton was a was a national legend. Um, Absolutely, and I totally he, was, he was loved and admired by by pretty much everybody. I think uh, you yeah. know, there's, there's not many people have a, have a have too many bad words to say about Bobby. Now, listen, the rumour is he was as tight as a camel's arse in a <laughs> but, you know, like you know, and, and and he still had his had his had his second Christmas money under his bed under his bed. But listen, that's the way that generation grew up, some of them. So he's um a thirty nice man and I've never heard anyone in the game of football have a bad word to say about him. I think it's well, with him as well. He lived like he didn't like he wasn't like a big heavy drinker who went out every night on the last either. He spent most of he used to be he'd be more likely to be out for a meal with his wife when he was out, wouldn't he? Yeah, he was the James Miller of his, of his yeah. generation. That's what I was thinking. Of his family, right, yeah. Because yeah, his brother family was completely different. Yeah, no, a proper 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 guy. A proper stand up <laughs> fella that if you had a daughter <laughs> You know, you'd be thinking, Jesus, if you brought someone home like Bobby, I'd be delighted, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's honest. And that's how I often measure it, you know? Jesus, if he was a young man, would I like my daughter bringing him home to me? Absolutely. I'd feel, I'd feel, I'd feel pleased for her. Yeah. You know, I had a footballer on quarter of a million a week at this stage. But anyway. <laughs> 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 I, wouldn't care. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't care if he wasn't so nice. <laughs> <laughs> How many doses have you got, Ken? No, that's what that's what Adam only is for. No, I, I actually have none. I've my, that's my, 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 uh, yeah, you say that. Cause... Yeah, I have two, two favourite nieces, though. I don't know them. <laughs> so, do you want to talk a little bit about Ma- Mamadou Saku and the wider uh, situation? There's something really important. Can I before you before you before you say anything? Yes, pal. On Saka, on, on Saka, the light of that is thing is quashed. What a nightmare for him, right? But do you know how they actually proved that uh, that he wasn't taking performance enhancing stuff? They watched him play. The way he was playing. No, no. <laughs> They found, they, out the was taking, they found out the Pogba was taking stuff from the same batch. So they <laughs> knew about the <laughs> But the thing is, the, what they te- he tested positive for, they then come out, you know, they, after UEFA looked at it, went through, you know, they said he tested positive for this substance he's got and banned him, <laughs> Wada. Then UEFA looked through the list and said, well, hang on a sec, this isn't on the banned list. So cleared him, obviously. <laughs> And then Wada sent out an uh, email, you know, um, press releases saying he was guilty of cheating and p- taking performance enhancing drugs from the ban list, even though UEFA had already told, you know, they already knew that they weren't on the performance enhancing, you know, they weren't on the list. So you just think, how did they end up in such a situation? Thing is, it yeah, doesn't but... surprise you in the slightest, does it, with them? No, it but really it's, doesn't. it's just, it's the guy's career, because, you know, okay. He's turned out to be a bit, you know, he's gone nowhere since. But at the time, he was the fix. He was a fixture in the Liverpool team that got to the UEFA final, you know, UEFA Cup final. Yes. 
and he got banned for it. That, and you're thinking, they're yeah. settling, they're settling him five bro. million. They're settling give him five million, and he'll walk away happy enough. Look, yeah, well, it, I it, wouldn't. It, would you? It, it, Let's be honest. Money's not an issue. He's worth millions already, so that's not going to change. So he had a chance to go to a World Cup and. To play in the UEFA Cup It's the European final. Championship. It's the European Championship. No, European Championship, sorry. Yeah, yeah 2016. Listen, you're a tra- it's all that's, all no money it's doesn't all fix that, mate. I don't believe it's it. All when you've got plenty. It's all for yeah. I think it's disgusting. And how many people has it happened to before him? And it raises question marks about the whole the whole way that they, they run their operation. And yeah. that's that part about it. And that's the same. Off you go. They've already compensated him. Yeah, quick question. Can Liverpool sue Wada? I wouldn't think so. They can. They can. But they won't yeah. win. But they won't win. win. I'm sorry, yeah. They can, but they won't win. Yeah. Why? Well, well, he was in the form of his life. We were. He, he missed the semi-final against Villarreal, and we lost the final. So, I mean, there is a case somewhere, surely. There is, but pretend- you- I don't think they'll win it. No, you'll not win it because they'll just say you can't. You know, they'll even if you did. There'll be it, variables and you. Yeah, even if you did yeah. win it, well, what are you going to gain from it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's like they're not. It wouldn't surprise me if Liverpool supporters wanted them to give them the trophy. <laughs> oh, that's been said. You've lost it now. Been said that we've done. Has it? Like, oh, honestly, no. oh. it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Don't, don't give Barry and Loud the opportunity. I would it's say. Bazza. I bet it was Bazzy. That's because he's, <laughs> he's Billy's son. Oh, what listen. you expect? He only, lives, he only lives up the road. It's, uh... Chris, you think he'd move if he lived that close to you? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. When, I say, when I say up the road, he's up the road. You've got to remember my driveway is two kilometres long. <laughs> No, they, they're 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 a, they're a good bunch. Um, uh, what uh, under norm, normal ex, normal circumstances, it's just unfortunate. And look, there's nothing anyone can do about it. it it's it'll be tomorrow's fucking fish and chip paper. Yeah, yeah, it's just a shame for the lad because he's had his career. Oh, career massive has shame for him. Yeah, I, I'm gutted for him. Honestly, it's it, it, like it, it, it's gutting, but look, no, we did it on purpose. People make yeah. mistakes. The whole world today is just. You're either far left or far right, or you're either one camp or the other. Generally, the the, the middle ground is the best place to be because, no, you know, people make mistakes. We we just have to get on with it, you know. And like people in my in my company make mistakes all the time, and you know, then they become ex staff. Generally, you know, I make mistakes every day in my professional life, and anyone who says they don't. It's just sometimes the consequences are really big, and and for this guy, it's just a nightmare for him. I I really feel for him, you know, I really feel for him. But there's nothing we can do about it. I I don't even know really. Yeah, it's just shocking, awful. Yeah, these things happen. It's just such a shame. But yeah, you don't. It's a good, you know. it's a good talking point. It is a good talking point, yeah. and really, what you what you want to do from any situation like this is you've got to put procedures in place so that there can't be a repeat of this and if that's the learning that everyone takes from it well then that's not the worst thing in the world that's what should happen every time a mistake's made you should just look to make it you know to improve on it learn from it yeah that's how you should yeah that's how you treat these things there's no point in jumping up and down you know on that philosophical (laughs) note i think we should leave it right there yes yeah. Well, I'm just stopping red jumping up and down then and recording. <laughs> Listen, if, I, if I don't get to training, I'll be one of those fucking parents Rashford will be knocking on the door to me saying, Why are you <laughs> And I'll say, come in, Mark. He said, I'm not coming into your house. He wouldn't get down <laughs> the drive, mate. Yeah, yeah. Listen, it's, a, it's, it's an absolute pleasure as always, gentlemen. All right, guys. And football to you guys is... is uh, it's always interesting, next you know? Thursday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, you're, if you're good, 
Yeah. Well, I've never, we've never been good. We've always been crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that's going to do. <laughs> the only way is up. Yeah. We keep, you know, if we keep the bar low, then we don't have any trouble meeting it, do we? No expectations. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next week, as a guest on the show, we'll have, um, we're going to have uh, Abdul from Turkey. And he supports he, he support, he support that team. He supports that team to beat United last Wednesday and next Wednesday. Well, see, see, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have, a, have a good well, evening, guys. Take take care, yeah, bye, same bye, to you, Ken. Take care, man. See Cheers, bye, bye. Go. Hey, pod lovers. It's that time of the week again where life gets rosy, your colours are vibrant, and you're down and dread... Ah, start again, mate. Right. <laughs> oh, no, that's a good one. Keep that one in. No, no, no. Start again. No, no. Start again, mate. Okay. You ready, then? Three, two, one, go.